So welcome to episode 2 of Mohi Talk, the worst podcast on the internet. Today I am receiving an internet hero, the creator and administrator of shit post bot 5000. Hello. Hello, I'm going to let you introduce yourself so uh, that way I don't forget anything and I don't say anything that I shouldn't say. So please introduce yourself with every bit of information that you deem relevant. I am known on the internet as Botman. I'm the creator of Shitpostbot5000. I'm from Sydney, Australia. Real name is Reese. Um, I've been kind of part of the meme scene for like five years now, six years, but I, I made Shitpostbot in maybe 2014, I think it was, 2015. So it's been around for a few years now. I've uh, been taken down several times. And uh, yeah, that's that's me. Um, when you say taken down, I assume you mean Facebook, but have you ever been taken down of other platforms? Because I know you're on Instagram, Tumblr, and uh, Twitter also. No, it's just me and Facebook. Yeah, they're, uh, they're a very heavy-handed moderation, to say the least. Yeah, they're, uh, they are really heavy-handed. And um, maybe the most recent Zuck, uh, you know, the court thing might change things in the future, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, apparently uh, in the future we, we, we will be able to appeal when the post is taken down, so maybe that will change a thumbs thing, but I don't believe it will change anything in, in, in reality, because I, th- I don't believe that the appeal will, uh, <laughs> will have any real process behind them. I, I'm hoping. I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic, but yeah, we'll see. Okay. So, uh, of course, uh, what I want to talk to, with you about is robots, because basically you're making what is, in my opinion, will become one day or another one of the most famous robots of the internet. Um, which one is your favorite robot in, in reality or in fiction? Are we talking like actual machine robots? Oh, it doesn't matter. I mean, shitpost bot is, is not a real machine. It's just a software, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's all software. So, whether whether it's um, Marvin from uh, H2G2 or uh, Hal from uh, Space Odyssey, whatever, whichever robot you prefer, GLaDOS from Portal, maybe? I don't know. Those are really all good candidates. I was just going to say Bender from Futurama, but I like all of those robots more than Bender. Those are cool robots. I think they're all cool in their own interesting ways, especially like Marvin is mostly just a, like, he's a funny robot. He's got funny depression, but uh, yeah. then you've got like <laughs> Hal, who is horrifying, like an actual terrifying idea Yeah, because Hal is fascinating because Hal is simply doing what it try. It's trying to ensure the best outcome, what the most positive outcome. And yeah. with the way that AI works, it's just, it considers that to be the most effective way is just killing everybody on board which is yep. horrifying and then glados is a mixture of those two i mean glados is funny but also horrifying like mm-hmm. she's a, a villain slash you know i mean it was made more confusing yeah. in portal 2 but yeah she's fascinating absolutely yeah uh, I, so, I, I love uh, how you said uh, that uh, marvin embodied a uh, funny depression because I think <laughs> funny depression really represents our movement. Uh, you that's and true, me that's can true. really relate to that funny depression thing. That's yeah, I'll, I'll say Marvin's my favorite then, just because yeah. funny depression. <laughs> yeah, yeah, make, yeah. Make, right. Putting light on such a negative thing. Hmm. I think my favorite robot is uh, Helios from the first Deus Ex. I don't know if you've played it. I've not played Deus Ex. I've wanted to, though, for a while. You would probably love it. The original one from uh, the year 2K. Yeah, I'll check that one out. Do you only make shitpost bot, or do you... uh, Because I've seen another... um, I've seen many others, actually. uh, Like, um, I think it's anime post bot, or um, music post... um, Yeah, this one. I've seen a a bunch of ones. Uh, Did you make all of them, or um, are you involved at all, or just like uh, copycats? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say copycats. More uh, inspired because a lot of the bots that have spun out from the blank post bot format have been really, really, really unique. Uh, half of them are mine. Half of them aren't. Uh, it's a case by case basis, and the best way to find out whether or not I made them is just by literally messaging the page and asking, "Hey, are you uh, are you same as shit post bot?" Uh, I can tell you now that uh, pages like text post bot, Bezier bot. 
paint bot. Um, I'm probably missing a lot of bots here. Uh, those bots are not mine. However, shitpost bot, well, obviously mine. Then we bots mine. Jojo bots mine. Uh, all okay. the ones which are kind of have that same format of templates and source images are mine, except for Lambda bot. That one's not mine. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I first, no, it's um, not Vortisons. There are two half life bots. One of them's uh, hmm. one of them takes like uh, one of them takes the uh, random walk algorithm and generates text out of it, and the other one. Uh, the other one does a shitpost bot style thing. They're both different, but then they're both made by different people. One of them's like shitpost bot, and the other one's not. Neither of them are mine. Okay, what gave you the idea at first to start shitpost bot? I was I was fucking around with uh with GD, which is a library for PHP, which generates images, and I felt like making a uh, a meme generator. I wanted to I wanted I wanted something that randomly took images and put them into a template and then made made stuff out of it because I thought that'd be a good way to teach myself PHP would be making something that can generate images like that. And at first I asked my friends, hey guys, what if I made a, uh, a meme, uh, what if I made a script that generates those uh, who will win memes? Remember those? The ones where it said, oh, who will win 1,000 lines versus the yeah, sun? I love yeah. those ones. Trillion trillion lines. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to make a script that generated those and I asked my friends, hey, would, would you like that? And none of them were interested at all. They are like, oh no, that sounds boring. And I was like, all right, whatever, I'll think of something else then. I said, all right, how about an everything generator? What about something that generates memes for every template? And they didn't know what I meant. So I, I just went ahead and made it. And then uh, I started running it. And they were like, what the hell have you stumbled across? This is incredible. And then I made a page out of it. That's pretty brilliant, in my opinion. It reminds me of uh, the novel, uh, The Soft Machine, written by William S. Burroughs. Do you know the, the concept of this novel? I do not. Uh, basically, the guy uh, used cutouts of various books that he rearranged at random to create new sentences and uh, a, a whole new story and just on on uh, bits of uh, sentences and words cuts from a lot of books that sounds really cool and it was um yeah i created that in paris in 1958 if i remember correctly and it, yeah it's um the first the first time i uh, i discovered a shit post but i was remain, reminded of of that uh, it's really the, um, the one of the the, the main um, nowadays representatives of uh, the culture of remix, and uh, you know um, what was really popular uh, ten years ago on the internet was uh, how, how is it called when you a uh, mashup mashups, and um, it's really really interesting. Did you ever have uh, did you ever had any problems uh, regarding um, like copyrights or um, intellectual property? Uh, actually, no. no. No companies have gotten... I mean, I've had individuals get upset that their face was used in a meme. Yeah, that, that's fair. Some famous, some not. Uh, one, of them, one of them was uh, that a lot of people know is uh, Vinny from VineSource. He was unhappy that a, a picture of him was used, so I removed that from Twitter and removed it from the database. That's surprising. I was imagining that someone like him was... Uh... Would be uh, yeah yeah I was surprised by that too delighted maybe or indifferent at least but oh huh, yeah. that's okay I was surprised by that too uh, Joel was fine Joel shares stuff that uh like he retweets stuff on Twitter that uh that has his size in it never issues with brands or anything like that never oh, photographers maybe no brands brands never get upset the only issues I have is individuals which I'm fine with and uh, Facebook just getting upset that my bot makes something that could be considered racist if you look at it in the right light like yeah that's yeah that's facebook i want i once had this conversation with somebody uh where i said i am i i have my issues with the phrase offense is taken but not given i however with shitpost bot anybody who does take offense to a shitpost bot post are literally taking offense to something that's not given like there's no there's no intent behind any shitpost bot post at all yeah of course it's a software generating randomly uh yeah, it's just creating by chance something that could be considered racist if you look at it in a certain way. But it's not actually; it doesn't have an intent intent behind it at all. So it, it's 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 an interesting take on morality at that point. That's not really new, though. People have been taking an offense at chance all the time. All the people who say, "Oh, it's not fair. Oh, the world is not fair. Life is not fair." And basically, there's those are people who are literally taking offenses at chance and. Yeah, just random, random machine. That's true. That's true. That's always been a thing. So, uh, yeah.
Yeah, people take offense to uh, them feeling like if they're unlucky. Yeah, that's crazy. Some people just like to complain, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of victim complex. It's always been really weird to me, but um, I guess it's uh, a lot of people are doing that nowadays. Not sure why. Not sure what's the appeal, but... Yeah, I saw a post today that was uh, talking about uh, gray hair and how uh, people take offense to... Uh... People with gray hair, and then the people with what? gray hair were offended that people were taking offense to them. It was really strange. <laughs> Everyone was getting really upset over at each other for uh, not accepting each other. It was really strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we li- we live crazy times. People do, people just need to chill the hell out. That's, oh, that would that's, be a good solution. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, if people would chill out just just a little bit more. <laughs> just relax a little bit. If so, so if someone says something to you that you don't like, then. Uh, I bet you just not listen to that person. That's a good solution. Shrugging is underrated. I know, exactly. <laughs> like, like if you go to any music board or music anywhere or any music forum at all, and just say, and just like say to someone, if someone says something about music and another person says I disagree, you just ignore them. But no, people don't ignore them. Instead, they go into forty-five minute rampages about uh, about something that's purely subjective. It's wild. Yeah, I had a, a problem with uh, because of that. The, it was about one year ago, and uh, I was on a on some music uh, talking group on Facebook, and um, uh, I, I there was a debate about Kanye West. Like, uh, is he just a good rapper, or did he revolutionize hip hop? And I was like, I don't think he's that important. In my opinion, his albums are kind of mediocre. And I got like harassed by Kanye West fans, and they mass reported. Oh, geez. They mass reported my profile, and it got taken down by Facebook because of that. Wow! Just because you didn't you didn't agree with them on Kanye West. Yeah, it's. Uh, you didn't even you didn't even say he was bad. You just said he was average. Yeah. And it's and it, and I still say it. It's still my opinion. I always thought of Kanye West as average and kind of mediocre, and I wouldn't change. <laughs> Terrorism will not win. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, I, I have I have no real opinion on uh, Kanye West at all. Great. I don't so, really I don't really listen to any of the, that kind of music. Internet high five. Uh, so, uh, what's your opinion on um, subreddit simulator? I assume you're familiar with it. Subreddit Simulator is cool. Um, I didn't know about it when I made Shitpost Bot, but uh, I found out after somebody showed me, and I thought it was really, really cool. I, I really love the concept. I think it was made after you made Shitpost Bot. Oh, I'm really? Pretty, pretty sure, yeah. Uh, at, 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 at some okay. point, I thought maybe you inspired them. I don't I don't know. but um... I, I don't think so. I mean, everybody who uses the blank post bot format, format are clearly inspired by Shitpost Bot, but I'm not sure. Subreddit Simulator might be completely unrelated. Um, I'm not the first one to make a bot that puts content onto the internet automatically. I mean, I'm certainly one of the most popular, but... Do you ever feel like a trendsetter because of it? I, I, I'm a trendsetter in that I invented the blank post bot format, but I'm not sure if I'm a trendsetter much further than that. I mean, I, sometimes I'll see uh, some people use a meme template that's on shippostbot.com because they shop in Google Images, which is really weird. There was a, I think it was a Jack Storms video, which uh, you could see the red outline from my code that had put in the rectangles on the website. And that was really weird. But I, I don't know if I feel like a trendsetter. I, I don't know, because I don't like being uh, too overly egotistical about that sort of stuff. But sometimes, yeah, sometimes not. It depends on what it is, I guess. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I, th- I, think, I think I created a bot community on Facebook, which is awesome. I'm glad that I started that because I love the creativity of a lot of the bots. They've created some really, really cool stuff. Yeah, that's true. Um, but uh, what, what I was thinking about is like, there is a huge debate at the moment about automation and how robots will like take our jobs and uh, you know uh, not only in factories but maybe like in deliveries and uh, in restaurants and in a lot of things and uh, do you think that maybe um, you are part of this like you created a robot that makes funny pictures maybe do you think that robots can in the future replace comedians and maybe come up with original funny jokes uh, technique, if you want to talk theoretically, robots can do absolutely anything. Absolutely anything. And anything. They, they can do anything that we can do, but they can do it better. The only limitation is uh, how fast they can do it. I mean, if you give a, a robot uh, 10,000 years to make a joke, and you keep on telling it whether or not a random string of characters is funny, 
eventually he's going to make a joke that's funny. Eventually he's going to make a random string of characters that is funny. However, you got to, I, I, I think in order, to, because comedy is a forever changing landscape, people are always finding new things funny. Back when Shippo Spot was first created, what was considered funny was taking random pictures and putting them on random templates. People were doing that at the time. Yeah, that that wasn't that wasn't something that I invented with my bot. People were doing that by hand mm-hmm. already. Yeah, they, people would put random fucking pictures on completely unrelated Twitter captions, and people found it funny. It was pretty obscure, though. It was never a, a big trend. And no, uh, it wasn't. It wasn't a huge trend. The no. the, the the most I've seen uh, doing that was robots more than humans, yeah. I think. And, uh, yeah, maybe but I, did, I did see it beforehand. It was a trend at one point. But now that's no longer considered funny. So people don't find that funny anymore. Now people are looking for a different kind of comedy, a different kind of joke. Yeah. Uh, well, and that, that landscape will forever continue changing. If you look at comedy that was considered edgy or uh, going too far, like, I don't know, let's say 60 years ago, mm-hmm. and then compare it to now, it's completely different. What people find offensive before is completely different now. And what people find funny before is completely different now. There are there are some universals though. I mean, there are oh, yeah. old there are old jokes that are still funny. There's a lot of old movies from, like, I don't know. Let's say uh, Charlie Chaplin. I, I know it will sound cliche or everything, but it's still funny today, even if it was made in the '40s. You know? Yeah, of course. But making timeless comedy is is an art. Making something that stays funny for a long period of time is hard. Yeah. I mean, the the, the, the a lot of uh, comedy relies on uh, current references or current trending topics. Yeah. Uh, I, especially if you look at stuff like Family Guy, old episodes would make jokes about O.J. Simpson, which was uh, popular at the time, but yeah, now it's kind of not talked about anymore. And now new things are being talked about. Episodes of The Simpsons, which refer, refer to Trump, that's going to be ridiculous in 15 years. Or it's, it's going to be updated in 15 years. Yeah, yeah. Not all comedy is uh, rooted in current events. I'm thinking especially about uh, someone like, f- for example, uh, Louis C.K., who makes jokes about uh, parenting and uh, having an itchy as whole. And, um, I mean, parenting will always be complicated and as- assholes will always be itchy. So uh, you could uh, you could probably show his comedies to someone from ancient Greece or uh, someone in the f- in the far future, and there will be a, a lot of people who who would find it funny. Of course, if you talk about like I don't know Trump or whomever, uh, it will be different. But uh, there are some things that are still, and um, I don't know. L- laughter is. Um, something that has always been really important for mankind. Some people think that's what really defi- differentiates us from animals. And um, maybe, maybe if, um, if in the future uh, we all, we're all dead and the world is uh, replaced by robots, I, I hope there will be some robot comedians who make robot jokes. That would be nice. I don't. I. I. I, co- I got completely lost in, in that thought, and I, <laughs> I, I. I forgot what I was trying to say. But oh, you, we were talking about timeless and comedy, like uh, jokes becoming timeless. Um, I don't. Uh, I think the best comedy is probably the timeless one. Absolutely, without a doubt. But I think even over time, simply what is trendy, like other art forms, is, like other art forms are like this too. What what's trendy and what's currently found funny. That changes. Even stuff like let's uh, let's look at an example like breaking the fourth wall. Yeah, that wasn't done as often ten years ago as it is now. I mean, it was still done. Breaking the fourth wall was something that always was done, but now it's like way more common. People break the fourth wall all the time. Yeah, in comedy, it's to the point where it's kind of overdone now. I remember uh, ten, fifteen years ago, it it felt fresh and and cool, and now it feels like oh. Again, someone broke the fourth wall. Again, someone is talking to the audience. Huh? It's uh, maybe it's 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 already becoming unfunny because so many people are overusing it. Don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. It is overdone, and that's that's why uh, I do consider um, comedy to be a forever changing plane. I mean, yeah, of course, there's gonna you're gonna have the timeless jokes, but in order to be timeless, you have to be unique, and yeah, that's that's something that not a whole lot of people often do. So. In order to be timeless, you have to be unique. Can you develop on that? Because I'm not sure I understand. 
Okay, well, let's look at, let's say we have uh, two YouTube comedians. One of them makes references to stuff that is popular right now. And another one makes references to jokes that they themselves made. Okay. So their own, their own internal uh, ecosystem of jokes that they make and refer to themselves. If you watch one of them that re- refers to how, how wacky this troll face is and you watch it in 10 years... It's not going to be funny anymore. However, if you watch that, uh, that, uh, that other guy that has his own ecosystem of jokes, his own group of jokes that only he makes, then it's still going to be funny because it's still his own stuff. Hmm. So you know, if you're unique and making stuff, making jokes that nobody else is making, or if you're putting your own creative spin on it, people are going to look back at it and go, oh, yeah, that's classic. You know, that comedian, that comedian was always like that. That was, that was his thing. And I still find that funny because it hasn't been overdone because only he did it. Though what what oh what probably always worked and will always work is stepping into things that are relatable. I know that it's it's really really used a lot at the moment and it's had it's become kind of a meme in itself. But it's um, on one hand it's safe because you know it's gonna work, and on the other hand. It's nice because you know that anyone around the world, even if they don't watch TV or anything, even if it's in the future or whatever, it's um it's universal, you know. So um I don't know, like I, I'm gonna say some bullshit example, like uh, having a hard time waking up in the morning and hating your alarm clock. Of course, it's really it's really cliche, but it's it will never really be stale because we have all experienced this kind of you know discomfort and uh, inconvenience so there's there's both there's there's the uniqueness and there's the universality and probably both are good for real good comedy maybe a bit of both i don't know what's your uh, your opinion i think that most comedy is uh i'd say like 80 to 90 percent of comedy is uh is, is it all loops back to relatable names? It all relates back to oh, I can relate to this. This is I I can I understand this. This is something I go through as well. And then what all they do is they take a fact of life and then they amp up something about it. They exaggerate something about it. For example, if you have a uh, footage of a guy, he has his alarm clock going off and he wakes up and he's like, oh, I'm so groggy, and then he just kind of turns off his alarm clock. Not funny. I mean, you can relate to it. You'll like that too. Alarm clock waking up. You're really yeah. tired. Yeah. However, if the guy has his alarm clock goes uh, goes off and he gets up, gets a baseball bat and smashes the fucker, that's exaggeration. You know, that's something that not everyone does in real life, but that immediately becomes something that's funnier. Yeah. So I think it'll always be that way. Um, relatable, relatable jokes being funny always even now with uh, people making fun of relatable memes and uh more out there stuff like oh do you ever just sit in your truck or uh yeah like if you ever <laughs> if you've ever drunk a water yeah <laughs> like that's that's people like to think oh we're making fun of relatable memes we're different no now you're relating you're relating to being sick of relatable memes that's still relating <laughs> exactly it's meta relatability it's yeah. uh, it's you relate on the fact that you're sick of relatable memes because yeah m- a lot of people right now especially people who do web comics are milking that too much and on a usually unsavory way um yeah yeah maybe like people like the bike cock and a lot of comics like that are like maybe t- trying too hard to be relatable and end up sounding kind of it's a kind of uncanny valley of comedy like you're really trying hard to be relatable but you end up sounding like a fucking um alien who's trying to sound human at some point it's uh, it's kind yeah of a, a robot yeah yeah a robot <laughs> we're, come we're back going full circle. back to the robot uh, by the- <laughs> uh do you have a background in uh computer programming and making robots or is it just a hobby for you yeah, yeah, I have a background in it. Uh, I've been uh, I've been doing programming for a, a while now. I do enjoy programming, so I, I do it. Uh, I do it for study. I've done work for it, and I also do it for a hobby. Huh. So uh, you want to make it your uh, your your job? Yeah, I do. Not sure in what section I would do want to do programming. I'm not sure if I want to do it in video games or web development or something like that. I'd like to work on a large project, but uh, like a part of a small like part of a small team in a big project that would be cool. But yeah, I've 
I'm not sure where I want to go in the future. Just somewhere IT. What do you think is the most interesting, physical robots or artificial intelligences? Um, because I don't, I don't know if you've seen this video of that robot that can open doors, the the, the one that kind of looks like a between a spider and dog, but it was it was kind of impressive when you know how that's... when you know the amount of math that is uh that is needed for this kind of operation that seems simple to us, but you know. I'd say maybe I find physical robotics more interesting because I feel like uh, right now software AI is all going towards the same goal. All of them are doing the same thing. It's just like, oh, why don't we use uh, machine learning to do this? Okay. Yeah. What, what about this task? I oh, will do um, machine learning. That'd be cool. Oh, what about this? I oh, will do machine learning. Everything's always going back to machine learning because right now it is the one size fits all best case or best solution to most most uh, complicated problems and simple and simple ai is still existing you know but finite state machines yeah stuff like uh tic-tac-toe and yeah. stuff can still be done by a finite chess. state machine chess can be use a lot of memory but still yeah it can be done with a finite state machine uh however robotics physical robotics requires so many different interesting ways of solving problems there's so many cool ways of solving the same pro uh, same problem and it's just done in a in a real way like with real motors and absolutely stuff yeah. being put together physically it's a really cool field that i don't understand enough I would like to get into robotics, but I don't know where to start. But I, I love it. I love robotics. There's a machine which somebody built which uh, flips a coin with the perfect amount of precision oh, in order yeah. to get it to either land heads or tails every single time. Yeah. They can choose which one they want. That's cool. I've seen that in a Vsauce video. Yeah, yeah, that's real. It was from Vsauce. Yeah, I forgot what it was from. But that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of amazing. And then you got all the... um. The, I forget what they're called. There's like a group of people that make robots. The the famous like walking robot and stuff like that. The ball robot. The one that can roll like a basketball and then turn into a robot with legs. No, that doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, it hasn't got a name. But it's like it's just this robot that can roll around and control itself to roll around as a ball. And then it can grow legs out of the ball. And it can roll down a hill and stuff like that. It's really interesting. But yeah, there are so many different ways of doing robotics. And I think that's why, what makes it continuously interesting is that there's no one size fits all for every single scenario for a physical robot yet a robot that can uh walk on four legs is not the best solution for a robot that needs to go down a road a flat road mm -hmm. for that would be a car mm, yeah uh, and then a robot that can open doors can open doors but it doesn't mean it can go for a swim yeah we don't have a one size fits all robot solution yet and I think that's what keeps everything fascinating. You've got new engineering, engineered solutions for every single problem. Do you think that's the future going like for more and more specialization or more and more multitasking robots who can do a lot of things who are polyvalent? Like maybe uh, robots that are really specialized and work as a team or a robot that is jack of all trades but a master of none. What do you think is the most, the best approach Oh, I, 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 I can pick which one I think is cooler, but I don't think I could predict the future on what it, what it should be. It's, it's I, fine. When you were talking about that, I imagined a future where you have like a hierarchy of robots. We've got like one robot that conducts a series of robots that are used for dealing with one particular task, another one that's for another group, and all of them have this major, massive hierarchy of tasks that they can do, and they all work together to achieve that one task. That would be the coolest thing. Like, for example, uh, if if uh, there's a guy stuck on a, on an island in the distance, yeah. you know, you, uh, it'll work out, oh, we need a boat robot, and then the ro boat robot will go over and save the person. Yeah, just a, this a hierarchy of cool robots working together would be awesome. And if there's a boat robot, we could call it Boat Butt. Which, I like that. Which would be a cool name. <laughs> what do you Sheep think is a... Yeah, <laughs> <Sheep boat butt. laughs> Uh, what do you think would be the most uh, interesting? I, I mean, what do you think is, is the most interesting? Using robots for science or using robots for art? Oh, man. Like, if you, have to, if you had to choose uh, in, your, you know, in, your, um, in your work life, in your career, uh, using robots that make science or using robots that make art, if you had to choose, which one would you choose? Uh, I would choose, if it was my career, I'd do art. Uh, I think I, I love 
I love uh, art. I, I think it's really interesting. It, it separates us and makes us human. That's what make, that's some, one of the many things that makes us human. You don't have any other animals on Earth that make art. True. And if they do, it's, not, it's nowhere near as, uh, as deep as what we do. The amount of effort we go to make art that we find interesting yeah. is incredible. We go so far for it. Yeah, that's true. The, the, the amount of money that I've spent on the stupid musical instruments, even when I had no money to it, that's ridiculous. But I, yeah, I felt so happy when I played my guitar that it's all faded away. It's, it's yeah, I don't think any other animal does that. No, not, not goes to the uh, extent that we do to enjoy art, whether that be art in the more classical sense, like buying a painting or buying music, or buying merchandise, but maybe more in the uh, more deep sense, like uh, watching movies and playing video games, the, with the effort we will go to, to enjoy and taking new art. Hmm. I, yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no real reason for it other than we need something that we enjoy. Other than that, there's no point to it. No, no real technical point to it. And I find that crazy. We do so much. We put so much energy and effort into making something that just entertains people. Yeah, that's true. And uh, the fact that you were um, talking about playing video games made me think about, do you think that in a probably near future, there will be robots making Let's Plays or streams on Twitch? Well, either physical there already or... are. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, you got. I mean, you got robots on Twitch already. Um, maybe not playing games, but you've got like you got Twitch plays, which I guess is kind of a robot. Um, yeah. And then it, you got the uh, uh, C robots. You got C robots talk or whatever it was called. That actually was literally just robots talking to each other. There was no human input at all. Hmm. Like that's literal robots. Hmm. I, I think yeah, there will be, but they're going to be separate. I th honestly don't think that robots will take over humans or humans will take over robots. Nobody was just like, oh, wow, uh, cool, this new Zoe AI thing from Microsoft is pretty cool. Well, I don't need friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can you can still talk to her and just find her to be a, a really funny little silly thing. Yeah. I mean, it, if robots may become like humans in the future, but that is really far away. Hmm. The amount of stuff that the robot will, has, will have to understand in order to seem real is crazy, you know? There's, yeah. there's so much for it to understand. I mean, if you were to ask it, have you seen Pulp Fiction? What do you think of that? And it'll say, uh, oh, I haven't seen it. What is it like? And then you would maybe compare it to another movie. Oh, it's kind of like this or or it's by this director. It can look at like facts and say, oh, this is a action dark comedy movie. But then if you were to start talking about the, putting the robot in front of the movie and making it watch it and then make subjective opinions out of it, how are those determined? Robots are like autistic humans. They, they can look at things technically, but they can't look at things artistically like humans can. Yeah. And that, that'll be really far away. And I'm not saying it's impossible. I mean, the crazy thing about robotic software is that there's no limitation to it. They literally, they took the way that the human brain works and just put it into software. I mean, it could, take, it could actually make its own opinions in the future. But right now, it can't even fully work out the stuff that's objective. Hmm. Do you think there will be um, soon uh, hybrids between man and machine? And um, let's talk about the, the, the technology and also about the ethics, because why not? Because recently I've seen a video of uh, a, a rat which had a broken spine and was paralyzed, and they um, replaced... Uh, um, I mean, they put him on a on on a robot, and and they put electrodes in his brain, and the rat was like moving by controlling the robot with his brain, and that was a few years ago. I don't know if you remember, but m much more recently, uh, they extracted the brain of a pig, and it stayed alive uh, outside of the the pig for um, quite a long time, a, a few days, and uh, we basically almost have the, the, the technology to put a, a human brain in a robot. Do you think that will happen, or it will be too ethically complex to decide if we can do it or not? I think that is a really good thing. I think it's a good thing that we can do that, that we can put um, humans into robots. I think that's a good thing. We can uh, 
extend the life of uh, important people, important key people that might be might be able to help us in the future. I think I think that is a good thing. I I, I don't I don't have many objections to that hmm. at all, to be honest. Uh, I mean, the the experimentation that may have to go into that might be cruel, but uh, I think that cruelty I think cruelty in science. Uh, is something that uh, don't go crazy with, of course. Don't don't be like a, a Nazi scientist, but it, sometimes it is necessary. Just be cautious and careful with it. But yeah, but as far as uh, augmented humans go, transhumanism, I guess, is what we're talking about here. Yeah, I, I think we already have been doing that for a while. It depends on what you consider to be transhuman. Like, uh, do you consider the iron lung to be transhuman? Hmm, that's a fair point. Maybe, yeah, maybe we we could argue with that. Like, uh, maybe a pacemaker, is transhuman. Yeah, but yeah, I got two. I got two family members, uh, close family members that have uh, have uh, pacemakers in the uh, attached to their hearts. On the other hand, what we're talking about is iron lungs, pacemakers, maybe even um, that thing you put in your eyes, um, contact lenses could be considered yeah. transhuman. But those are all examples of things that are made to um, put people that are weakened by illnesses uh, or deformities back to the level of average normal people. That's These are not made for to augment uh, basic humans to something that's superhuman. Those are made to like, re- repair, basically, um, I'm, I'm doing air quotes in front of my mic, uh, repair people who are broken, you know, and um, this would be different. This would allow this would allow someone to, I don't know, run faster, jump higher. Maybe it was maybe it would be considered like a weapon or it's, um, you know, maybe I don't know who who would be who would be selected and by whom. Would would it be considered like um, a medical procedure or more cosmetic surgery? It's a it's a whole slew of questions that are opening up, and it's not about experimentations anymore because basically the technology is almost there. It's we 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 tried it on on mice, rats, now pigs. It's only. I mean, humans are not that different from these animals on a purely physical standpoint. And uh, we may be able to implant a human brain in a robotic body in a few years. It seems possible with the technology we have today. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me that we're that close to it. Um, have you seen Vsauce's uh, YouTube Road series? No. I, my I've, field? I've seen... Yeah, I, I've seen a couple episodes, but um, I really didn't like the the editing and and, and the music and everything. I, I hated the format, so I, I didn't I didn't really watch it. Yeah, the content itself was really good. There was one uh, there was one thing where uh, they they connected like a bunch of wires to uh, to Michael's head, and they and they said, okay, just press the button while it's lit up. Like while the button's lit up, press the button. And he was mm-hmm. like, okay, and then he pressed the button whenever it was lit up. But then eventually, what? it did was it learned what the brainwave was like when they were about to press the button and they made it so it would turn off just before he pressed the button. Hmm. So that after a few tries, eventually he couldn't press the button while it was lit up because the machine was reading his mind and working out when he was about to. Huh. Even even when he was about to think about doing it, not when he started moving his hand, when he was starting to think, oh, I'm going to press it now, boom, it would let it lit up and then unlit. Crazy. This reminds me of that episode of um, House where um, a guy has uh, locked in syndrome you know and uh, they they uh, even if th- he has locked in syndrome and he cannot move a single muscle uh, they they hook up the thing to um it's not even hooked up right to his brain it's only a thing that's on his head like a helmet it's not connected r- directly to his brain and uh, he he a- he is able to move a, a cursor on a screen uh, to express like a, there is a screen with a yes on the left and no on the right, and he can move the cursor just with his brain waves or or whatever. And it's uh it's based on a real machine that really exists. You know, it's not fiction. And I don't. Yeah, because you... you can actually uh you can actually uh do eye tracking now. We can we uh in fact when they're studying in uh GUIs, GUIs for like 
uh, applications and stuff, they they track eye movement and work and use that to optimize the application to work better. I mean, that's that's really powerful. Being able to hook into what people are looking at, knowing what exactly what people are looking at and when. That's super powerful. You can you can do stuff that's very close to mind control with that. Just simply looking at stuff for long enough. Eye tracking, like on the on the on the three DS or um, what what kind uh, of. Eye like, tracking, I mean, uh, l- uh, knowing what people are looking at on a screen, knowing where their eyes are looking, like what they're focusing on with their eyes. By looking at their eyes? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've seen, yeah, I've seen a bunch of stuff lately to, done with that. Um, I, I've, I've seen a, a couple of days ago a, a, a little robot on, on Amazon, and uh, it moves um, according to where you look. You just have to have your smartphone in hand so you, the camera can look at your face, and you just move your eyes, and the robot moves in the direction that your eyes are, uh, are, are, are going. And it's not even, a, it's not even a something crazy. It's, it's like it costs like 50 bucks, and it's a small robot, and it's, uh, it's already on, on the, in the pocket of consumers right now. It's crazy. That's insane. Makes you think about what they're doing, like in the industry. What have they got? Oh, yeah. working on behind the scenes that we don't know about yet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I even seen um. I I think uh, there's a mouse that's been uh, like a mouse for computers that has been released um, a few months ago. That is just a pair of glasses, and you move your eyes, and the cursor moves on the screen just where to that's cool. go, just where you're looking. I I don't remember if it's a glasses or a kind of webcam, but. Uh, Maybe it's just software and you can use it with a regular webcam. I don't exactly remember, but um, yeah, yeah, it seems to work pretty good. Back on the whole transhumanism thing, uh, there's a guy in Sydney called uh, Meow Meow, I believe he's called. <laughs> okay. He kind of went international. He took out a travel card, you know, like um, when you go on a train, you can tap the card onto the thing and then it'll, it'll pay for it. Yeah. In Sydney, ours is called Opal in Sydney, Australia. Uh, and what the guy did was he uh, he took the NFC chip out of the card and then cut his hand open and put the card into his hand. Hmm. So now whenever he goes to the train station, he'll just put his hand up against the reader and it'll let him through. Huh. He considers himself to be transhuman now. Huh. <laughs> I don't know if that really counts as transhumanism, but that's a, that's a pretty funny thing. <laughs> I remember a British dude from a few years ago who did that, but uh, on the um, on the tip of a... Uh, you know, a uh, uh, toy w- Harry Potter wand, and he dressed as a wizard, and he pointed his wand at the, you know, the turnpike, the turnstile, or whatever, and the thing, you know, activated. That's a whole new level to to put it right under your skin, though. Yeah, uh, but, it, but it does give him an ability that no other human has, which is he can now not have to worry about pulling his travel card out of his wallet and tapping against the reader. Now he just put his hand against the reader. It's really weird. I'm not sure why he did it. I think he's just obsessed with transhumanism. There's no other logical explanation. I mean, there are plenty of other illogical explanations, but let's maybe not go there. And um, <laughs> that, that, sounds, that sounds like the most plausible explanation. Yeah, he's just overly obsessed. Yeah, some people are just like that. Let's take a break from robots. And uh, what is, my dude, your favorite meme? Thing is, I've never, I've never known what to say to this because uh, it, it always depends on a case by case basis. What uh, what I what I find funny. Uh, most of the time, most of the time though, it's been uh, jokes between my friends that I find the most funny because usually we make and send jokes to each other that only each other will get. But uh, beyond that. Oh, what have I found funny recently? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't found a meme funny in in a while. Not like a popular mainstream one, anyway. Maybe we can um, we can uh, go yeah, like from the large to go to the small. Uh, what's your favorite meme format? Um, image, video, or text? Image. Okay. I think you can do a lot with images. Like manipulations, photos, with or without captions. I think uh, without captions, no context stuff is uh, really funny. Stuff that you simply yeah. look at the picture, no words at all, and you know what's funny about it. Yeah. There's a page called Explorer, which is really good at doing that. Hmm. It's a it's a page that's uh, Brazilian. All like all the people who comment are uh, talking in Portuguese, and the page owners they they speak Portuguese. But it doesn't matter. People from all over the world find it funny because you don't need to understand any language to find it funny. Hmm. I think that 
pretty much loops back to what we said earlier about the universality of the best comedy. Yeah, absolutely. Breaking language barrier. Yeah, exactly. I think like um, a lot like the um, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but the drawings of this man called Gary Larson. No, I'm not familiar with him. Well, um, he's a cartoonist from the uh, the U.S. from uh, I don't know if from the 80s or 90s. Maybe he's still active. And uh, yeah, he does these uh, these comics called The Far Side, where it's a lot of uh, outlandish situations, and uh, often it's without words at all. And yeah, maybe it's like what would I say? The Tex Avery cartoons, like often there's like no words at all. Like I'm thinking, of course, Tom and Jerry or um, Wildy Coyote and uh, Road Runner. Kind of, you don't have to to be from any part of the world or any time or any. You don't even have to understand the almost non-existent dialogue to to find it funny. Yeah, and like it's probably because because they mostly just say really really basic words. You don't have to understand it. At all. Yeah, there's there that used to be kind of a big thing on, on 4chan 10 years ago. I love that. I wish it would come back, but you know, the images that um, we've all seen the cat pushing a watermelon at Ava Lake. Remember this one? No. And um, the dude in a suit with um, a sewing machine in hand who is looking happy. With the background, there's a car crash. I think I know that one, yeah. Yeah, the, th that's the kind of images you're talking about, or? Uh... Yeah, stuff that's purely visual. Uh, but stuff that, yeah, you don't have to uh, read any text to know what's going on. You just simply look at it and you understand what's trying to be said. Like this image of a uh, policeman picking up a pig and putting it into his police car. People know the joke that's trying to be put across there. <laughs> People understand the joke just by looking at it. There's no text there at all. You just know, oh, that looks like a policeman that he's picking up a pig. Okay, I understand the joke. Yeah, I, I, I used to collect these images. I, I got to have maybe 10,000 of them in a wow. USB, USB thumb drive somewhere. And uh, <laughs> I like to post them a lot of times. Usually, at, at first, when I created my page, it was purely to share this kind of images. And then I, I expanded into meme shit. and uh, But those kind of images, I think, yeah, that's always been some of my favorite stuff. Even if... Yeah, I'll, I'll say that genre, all that subgenre of image is my favorite. Just stuff that's just a picture. Really simple. And there's never been... That, what is crazy to me is that those are always been around on the internet from as far as I can remember. Even the first time I went on the internet in the 90s when it started being a thing and then the early 2000s when uh, I got heavily into it. This kind of images were always around and a lot and it's a bit less now but it's still uh, pretty much everywhere, on, on especially on like Tumblr or Reddit or 4chan. And um, what is weird, in my opinion, is that they never got a name. Like, this format, this kind of weird images that is kind of funny and kind of weird and in an odd way. We never had a, a name for that. Isn't that crazy? It should be given a name. Or at least, like, I would say out-of-context images would probably be the best name for some of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. just they provide their own context, and I really like that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They provide their own context, and uh, you can imagine the context in your head, and you can uh, even make up a little story. Or uh, I remember this this one about a, a lot of guys who look like dads who are waiting in line at a buffet that looks absolutely horrible with a dreary lightning, and uh, it's all like shrimp uh, in 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 ice and, and weird shit. I don't, I don't know if you've seen this one, but yeah, there's a lot of images like that around, and um, we should we stuff should... like our uh, cursed images. Yeah, yeah. Where it's yeah. just like, what, what's going on? What, 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 yeah. what was done to have that happen? Who, who did this? Who did this? <laughs> <laughs> who but, did that? Yeah. But yeah, that's um, you ask yourself, who took this picture? Why? What's the context? What's the situation? Why? And why is it so funny? Exactly. A lot of times it's not just funny. It's funny and puzzling or funny in an eerie way. Kind of, um, I don't know, stuff that is 
looking like it's straight from a goofy horror game from the 90s or a, you know, there's a lot uh, of, of weird shit around. It's the kind of double lecture that we can... At first, it's a funny image, and after we think about it, like, it's funny, but also it makes you think, but not in an inspiration kind of way. It's more like, oh, that's a funny picture. Wait, what the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? What 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 is what is being done for this to happen? At first you see the fun and next you see the weird. And maybe the fact that it's like two emotions at the same time, like being being um laughing and then weirded out, maybe that's what makes those um really impactful for at least for some of us cuz they've never really been popular. They've always been around, but they've never been mainstream. Maybe they'll never be or maybe they're they're the next big thing. Who knows? I I, I think that's uh, that's why they've been around for so long. Because you said it. You remember those kinds of images being around since like the nineties, and they're yeah. still around today. That's that's maybe why they're so successful for so long. Is because they've never really blown up. It's just the the group of people that like them continue to like them, and there's always an audience. But the audience isn't too big. It's just something that's. Well, maybe it's just that the whole concept of them are so broad. That you can't get sick of them because they're always different. There's always something else that's new, that's changing about it. Or maybe what I'm what I'm thinking right now is that there's, it's always things that are found. People are not making them. It's like that's true. It's, it's like found footage. It's like it's found shit. You 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 can't <laughs> make one. You or you have to be really really good at it. Maybe, but it's not like those. Um, rage comics that people used to make by the fucking dozen every second. <laughs> <laughs> the people are still making those. That's that drives me wild. It's yeah, uh, unironically, I, people are still making them on yeah. F7U12 on Reddit. Oh, still I, getting made. I love it and hate it at the same time. And uh, yeah, but, but it's a shame that um F7U12 ham was taken down or no longer running because F7U12 oh. ham was phenomenal. Oh yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. Oh, damn. I didn't know it was down. I, I love yeah, that stuff. Yeah, it's not running anymore. Because people, no. people used, uh, abused it and just posted dumb shit on, uh, on F7U12 just to oh, get it damn. put on Ham. Hmm. But Ham created, like, so many popular memes, including uh, Peach Time and Burger Time. Really? Peach Time is yeah. from there? Oh, yeah, Peach man. Time's from there. <laughs> oh, I, I love that meme so much. Peach Time. And have you seen all the... Yeah, the the other ones like uh, Cantaloupe Instant and uh, Satsuma Moment and all the other ones that are derived, they're pretty great. Yeah, all the classic derivatives of uh, yeah. of that. And then it became Burger Time, and that's a whole other thing. Yeah, Rage Comics. I don't know why they had such an impact because I remember when they started going around. It was in 4chan in two thousand and seven. And then they become really, really popular there in 2008, so much that they basically shut down themselves, and people on 4chan weren't using them anymore. There was like, a dead meme, uh, old memes are gay. And then, of course, they got recuperated by Reddit, because Reddit was really shit at the time. It's kind of better now, but um, yeah, Reddit 10 years ago was a fucking dump. And they took all these memes, and they made a lot of weird-ass comics, with them and it's yeah it's still going on then it was nine gag then uh it's maybe the most recycled format of all time this shit is more than 10 years ago and there's a lot of i, I don't know if you've seen the, the meme restaurant kickstarter from last month no not in oh you gotta you gotta watch that i assume that you know uh critical yeah we are not critical did he well, do a video on it uh, yeah, he made a video on it about a month ago, and I think the video was just called Meme Restaurant, and it's it's some crazy Kickstarter where people are asking for um, 300000 uh, dollars to make a meme restaurant with um, Rage comics on, on the tables, and on the menus there are shit like the... The Haram Burger for Harambe, you know, and the uh, oh know, no, bunch of sh- yeah, that's um, yeah. I'm sure that restaurant will age well. 
<laughs> I'm sure it will get funded. <laughs> oh, uh, absolutely. You'll get the full $300,000, you bet. <laughs> yeah, that's... Oh, man. When I, when I saw that at first, I thought, oh, yeah, that's an old shit from 10 years ago. No, no, there are references to Harambe and uh, pen, pen, pineapple, apple pen. and uh, Oh, no. Yeah, and the, the damn Daniel milkshake or whatever the fuck it was. It was pretty jarring <laughs> but yeah it's and there was like there was a, a presentation video that was the most crazy shit you could imagine like it was you know the fucking horrible advertisement music with the whistling and the the hand claps and the ukulele you know that horrible shit with the xylophone yeah 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 the stuff that's always used in kickstarters so yeah the, that music <laughs> with <laughs> <laughs> with uh, uh, drawings that look like half clip art, half WikiHow illustrations, and all the memers look like uh, old guys in suits, and it's so fucking weird. You gotta watch this meme restaurant. Why are Rage Comics still around? I don't know. I, I, I genuinely puzzled me. I remember it. Ten years ago, people were so sick of him that they were already making, like, crazy, ironic, nonsensical versions of those. That, that's what got me into uh, ironic shit, was uh, an album on Imager of just fake troll faces, like, variants of, like, un- oh, ironic troll faces. Yeah. And I loved that. That, that, was, that killed me. And that still is kind of funny. Coaxed into a snafu. Yeah, yeah, that sort of yeah. stuff. Oh, man. I used to, um, I think I have a hundred of those on, on some, you know, external hard drive. I used to love them so much. I, I uh, There was a Tumblr who posted those daily. And uh, yeah, I, wish, I, I looked at that shit every day because that was like one of the biggest joys of my, of my day. It was it's incredible shit. I remember that. That got old pretty fucking fast because people kept making those and I, I and I kept seeing like ten more every day. But uh, for a short period of time, that was fucking epic. It was. It was. It was fucking crazy. And I I still do find ironic rage comics still funny. I I do. I think yeah, there are same. If done, if done well, they they can still be funny. Sometimes I'll go back to uh, family friendly rage comics right to the very start of when they were around, and that those are still funny. Remember that page. What what's name? Family friendly rage comics. Um, no, doesn't. That that was phenomenal. Uh, the the running gag was uh oh uh hey like it was like uh, a guy saying oh no I'm actually gonna eat a pineapple for its nutrition no uh, its nutritional value it was fucking retarded I need to <laughs> find this level. When you drink water. <sighs> For its nutritional value. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, yeah, yeah. I, I totally see what the kind of thing. It's, it's crazy how it's become such a big thing nowadays. Just seeing, like, hey, here's my face when I drink water, and this picture of a guy drinking water. How just describing what you're doing right now has become. It's almost becoming a trend because I see it all the time now. I see it all the time on on, on Tumblr, Reddit, 4chan, Facebook. It's, uh, it's. Maybe the new big thing, like just a uh, meta meta relation, like meta relatable names. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Rage Comics started off as being relatable, but then the ironic ones came along, and they were relatable in that we were sick of fucking Rage Comics all the time, and now we need something that's chaos. And they were absolute chaos. Yeah, the ironic ones. Yeah, and it was almost like a, a cycle. Because at first there were the relatable rage comics on 4chan, and then they became unbearable because they were all the time there. So people made those crazy, ironic, nonsensical rage comics, and then rage comics became popular everywhere else than 4chan, and that yeah. was that was a crazy double whammy to me. Like it's so weird how the internet has several speeds. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's so it's so um it's so alive the internet, but it's like it's like real life but faster. Everything's fast. Uh, it depends on what it is, but some stuff can become funny and then not funny after a day and a half yeah. because of how often people create content around that thing, like uh. Uh, Uganda Knuckles that became funny and then not funny over the course of like twelve hours. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah, that was so fast. It blew up, and then it be- and then 
and it it's like it became a meme in itself because of how unfunny it was and people were using it ironically and uh, now I see it from time to time uh, uh, people using it as an example of a bad meme inside a meme like for example uh, you know you've seen this meme that is really popular uh, these these past few days of the the guys um, in a post in a post apocalyptic world who's uh, who's like oh man I miss the internet and the other guy was drawing a picture for the first guy and he shows him the picture and the other guy answers something you've seen this one no I haven't actually okay it's it's been all over the place the, for the past two or three days and um it's from a it's from a comic and uh yeah 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 uh, originally it was like the first guy was like uh, you know it's it's like soldiers in the future in the post apocalypse and it, they were in gas masks and and military suits and um and the first guy is like oh man i miss the internet and the second one draws in a, a picture and it's like this meme of Fry from Futurama, who's was like, uh, not sure if I really miss the internet or just the memes. And the first one is like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's it's really meta, and and of course it was memed to death since then. And uh, once one I've seen uh, this morning that really uh, <laughs> that really made me laugh is like the first guy is saying, of course, oh man, I miss the internet, and the second one. Uh, is giving in a picture of Ugandan knuckles, and the first guy is like, "Oh, yeah, sure, never mind." <laughs> <laughs> that really, that, that yeah, that really made me laugh. It's weird uh, with the Ugandan knuckles. So I remember, I distinctly remember it going from, "Oh uh, yeah, or oh, do you know the way?" and then click, click, like actually doing it. And then it was really, really fucking dull, like not funny. And then now people are just like, "Ah oh, yes, haha, Ugandan knuckles, click, click." Am I right, fellas? Lol. You know, it's now. Uh, making fun of it for not being funny is now funny. Yeah. Sometimes it will go further layers of irony down and down. And yeah, I yeah, like I yeah, like yeah, I yeah. like memes at the most when they're like that, like one or two layers down in meta. And um, there was uh, several steps I remember because at first uh, there was this meme, and then there were people finding it unfunny, and then there were people who who went on a on a fucking crusade because they found that the meme was racist. Mm -hmm. There was this oh, too, yeah. and that's what kicked it back because it was being forgotten. And then there were a bunch of you know shithead SJWs um, who felt the need to get offended, just like they feel the need to get offended at everything. Yeah, every everything is offensive. Everything's upsetting. If you don't find it funny, then look away. You can literally just not pay attention anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, reminds me of that old tweet of Tyler, the creator. You know the one. That's, oh, yeah. oh, just man. close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> just, just turn off, just turn off the fucking computer. <laughs> like, how is cyberbullying real? Like, nigga, just turn off your computer and and walk away. Like, man, what, there, what the there hell? There was a uh, there was a Ricky Gervais thing that's going on uh, going around right now, where he's just like, keep people who get upset at my tweets. And get offended by looking at my tweets. It's like if you walk into a town square, see a sign that says guitar lessons and going, I don't want fucking guitar lessons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a really apt metaphor. Well, you don't want guitar lessons, walk away. You do not have to get guitar lessons. You don't have to read people's tweets if you disagree. Just walk away. You do not have yeah. to listen. Yeah, yeah. Their opinion doesn't matter to you. It shouldn't anyway. Exactly, yeah. An opinion is like an asshole. We all have one, and we all think that ours stink less than the others. But they all—they're all shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opinions are opinions are trash. I wish that the new meme <laughs> was making fun of people who have opinions, because that's that's ridiculous. My my opinion is that opinions are shit. Yeah, if you have an opinion, <laughs> you're not woke. Yeah, the uh, the the true future is uh, centrist. Mighty centrist master race. Just like in Tales Get Trolled, you've, you've read Tales Get Trolled, I assume. I, I think, I do I do vaguely remember that, yeah. And uh, you know that's the, the neutrals. There's a huge faction of warriors called the neutrals. Because they, uh, they have annihilated all their opinions and now they're neutral and everything. And it has <laughs> uh, allowed them to have... Uh, more brain power and more freedom <laughs> and more energy and now they're like these unstoppable warriors who are stronger than everyone else the neutral yes go centrist <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> uh, 
And um, yeah, but but yeah, yeah, that meme Uganda no- Knuckles is is really a meme that had a, a bumpy a bumpy life because yeah, at first it was funny for a few hours, maybe a day, and then it was unfunny because it got stale really fast because it got overused, and then the the S J Dubs found it and said it was racist and then they they put on the fucking crusade and uh, i remember one of the the websites that, that i like that makes t-shirts had a uganda knuckles shirt and they they got bullied to death and they had to take the shirt down uh, wow and, uh, yeah yeah there was really uh, a bunch of a bunch of people that made merchandising and stuff like that and uh they they had to they there was such an outcry that they had to shut the things down and and uh uh, remove them from their from their stores. Nobody should have to do that. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird because it's a, it's. I don't know if it's really cowardice, or it's if it's. I don't know. They're trying to avoid bad PR, but they're creating more bad PR because their audience thinks they're cowards and they're. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, I think there's just a lot of people who are getting confused and trying to play it safe, and just there's no way to play it safe. There's no way to win this kind of battle, so maybe just like ignore that shit. They sh- they they have, they are experts in marketing and communication, and well, they should know better. But yeah, and because of the outcry, of course, the meme got kicked back in into gear because there was all the edgy kids who were like, "Oh my god, we're gonna trigger the the." The, the the feminists and uh, who think this racist and there was all the um, the the people who who do, don't give a shit who, who were like what why this, this is not racist it's just a meme and it, and it, yeah the, and um, so that made it popular again because people were um, angry uh, at the S J Dobbs being offended and so it almost had a second life for a few days. And then it crashed again, and now people most mo- people now mostly remember it as being unfunny. But yeah, it had an interesting life. It did have an interesting life. Isn't that weird though that people will go out of their way to find something funny again, or go out of their way to like something that they are either indifferent on or don't like, just to upset social justice warriors? It is weird. It is really strange. It's just like oh, I don't actually, I don't, I don't actually like this thing. But I'm going to pick it anyway, just because I like seeing SJWs getting triggered. That's so weird. Why? Why would you do that? I kind of get it, because they're trying to, like, get back at them. But, yeah. I'm... Like, remember there are the net, net neutrality thing? What? The net neutrality thing. Yeah, what about it? Um, I, I remember seeing a lot of people saying, "Oh, yeah, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna support uh, abolishing it because I like seeing the libtards get triggered." <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> What's the point? Yeah, because of course a lot of companies that are uh, that are pushing it, like Google and and Facebook and all that, are uh, pretty fucking far left, and, and so the people, are, uh, a lot of people put a fucking conspiracy theory around that, like, oh, they must be pushing it because it will enable them to have more censorship and more monopoly, and so it must be, it must be bad, so uh, net neutrality must be a bad thing if Google and Facebook, who are evil empires, are for it. And it almost makes sense, if you're kind of retarded, it, it almost makes sense, I, I kind of get it, like why people would think like that, but it's kind of like saying, um, uh, "Well, if we come from monkeys, why are there still monkeys?" Yeah, it's the it's the same way of thinking. Like, but no, their mindset literally it doesn't even go as far as oh, well, Facebook and Google. No, literally their mindset stops at hmm. When I say that I want it abolished, libtards get cranky. Hmm, this must be something I want. It's such a simplistic way of looking at things. Like, if you're going to have an opinion on it, maybe start reading up on it and see how you feel about it subjectively. See how you personally feel about it. Not choose your opinion based around what other people think. I really do not like contrarians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's people who had such a lack of personality that they build their personality by making it the opposite of a group that they hate. Yeah. 
it's and that that's even worse than uh, just following trends. That's even worse. That's just going against the grain for no reason. It's normal if you're a teen, I guess, because you're entitled to that kind of behavior because it's in your it's the hormones and all that shit. Yeah, but, that's what happens when you're a teenager. Yeah, but I've seen yeah I've seen adults doing that, and I was I was like, what? What? Uh, why are are you maybe being ironic? And they were not being ironic. Contrarianism in general is really a weird thing. Like it's pretty toxic. You you pretend to not care about other people's opinion, but you care so much that you build an entire thing around them by being kind of a mirror image, but in in you know the opposite. Being the opposite of a thing is almost the same as being the thing in a lot of cases. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the current contrarian thing, the current thing that contrarians are latching onto is, I don't like Fortnite personally. And they, they all do it. They all don't shut up about not liking Fortnite. It's so weird. Yeah, I've seen that. And um, That's fine if you don't like Fortnite. But um, I used to be kind of upset at Fortnite because of the astroturfing. Because at some point... Every celebrity and shit was like, "Hey, Fortnite, Fortnite, Fortnite," and it kind of, kind of got shoved down our throats by a lot of you know, celebrities and influencers and uh, so many like people who have lots of uh, followers on YouTube and shit, who are like talking about it out of the blue, and that I get why why people get upset at that because I get kind of upset at at that. I'm like, "Yeah, guys, can you?" Please stop talking about Fortnite. You're play, probably not playing it. It's like that... Um, I don't remember a, a, a celebrity recently. I think it was a model or whatever. It was like... Um, uh, in an ad for the latest... I don't... It was a smartphone. I don't... It was a smartphone. I don't remember exactly which one. But I was like... Oh my god. I love my new Samsung Galaxy S9. Uh, it's so great. Uh, and I'm having so much fun with it. The camera is top. Uh, buy it, guys. Sent from my iPhone. <laughs> and... <laughs> and that was... Uh, that was such a... And there is so much shit like that happening lately. Like, I'm not against sponsorship... <laughs> Of course, I get that. It, you gotta eat. What, man's gotta eat. Man's gotta have those the sandwiches because you gotta feed yourself, or else you're physically die, and that's kind of sad. But I'm not against making money, advertisement, all that. But this astroturfing that happens a lot lately with online influencers, it's it's annoying. I don't know why I'm so upset with this, but. Yeah, all these celebrities saying, oh, this product is great, but they've obviously never tried it. It's weird. Yeah, and even if they had tried it, I don't think that their opinion is any higher than uh, my buddies. Like, if I ask my buddy what they think of the uh, the new Samsung phone, if they have it, I won't take their opinion any more or less seriously than uh, a celebrity. In fact, I'll probably take uh, the celebrity's opinion less because they might be more prone to lying to me. But still, it must be successful if, if companies continue to do it. Yeah, sure. I mean... Why? Who's listening to celebrities? I don't know. I, it, it boggles the mind. I mean, at least mine. It's I, I really don't know. And I, I mean, I would listen to my buddy more because he's my buddy and I know him. Yeah. And I know that I can trust him. A random celebrity? Why would I give a shit? I mean, and and uh, your buddy, your random buddy, probably knows more about technology than the uh, than the actor does. The celebrity, yeah. the, ce yeah. the celebrity is trained in entertaining. That's what they're good at. They're good at entertaining. They're not trained in tech. Exactly, and uh, often it's like, what the fuck? Why are you talking about this? It's like uh, athletes and uh, models and actors. I mean, maybe maybe if it was like I don't know, Gabe Newell or. Uh, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto talking about this game and say, oh, this game is really cool, you should try it. Yeah, maybe uh, I listen, but some fucking model? That's, and that happens so much lately. And uh, sometimes when the product is really shitty, that gets blown out. Like, you remember the Fire Festival? Oh my god, that shit was insane. Yeah. 
You remember the end? Uh, I think they're making a documentary on it, and it's going to be out soon. Oh, interesting. A full-length movie just about how crazy and shitty it was. And uh, um, that got famous because it was astroturfed by, uh, by, by models on Instagram, especially. And I think they got sued, by the way, because uh, they didn't disclose the fact that it was sponsored. And um, they obviously got was, were talking about a thing that they didn't know about. And I think there was a, a huge um, lawsuit. I should read again about it, but I, I think I'll watch the movie. It'd probably be really entertaining. But uh, that happens all the time, and people only talk about it when the, the product is blatantly fake or shitty or like the fucking Juicero. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Juicero. That's the one with, um, it's just packets of juice. Yeah. That it squeezes out, yeah. Yeah. That's so dumb. Yeah, that's that's crazy in the... The, how did the, that how did that get made <laughs> like how does that even get made how do people go oh yeah we'll turn this into a product this would have had to have been like hundreds of people involved in making that how uh, do any of them stop and think maybe this isn't morally right i guess those people that did think that didn't end up working on it all they had left were people that just really needed the money it's sad apparently if i under, if i understood correctly it was really um overzealous engineers who wanted to make like the best product possible and and the thing was like th really thick aluminium walls and a lot of small motors that that were wired into each other it's, it's a really weird thing and um they didn't really know what product they were working on so they tried to make the best um it's uh um, the best thing <laughs> yeah exactly and it was i think it was financed by kickstarter right yes i think so yeah, yeah, and that that thing was uh, just basically a, a thing that presses things, <laughs> and it was sold originally at seven hundred dollars. For something you can do with your hands. <laughs> and yeah, the, there was a, a, a video uh, of someone literally doing with their hands, and it, it was the same. And I, I think it was actually faster. <laughs> and it had to be, of course, connected to the internet at all times. If it was not online, it would not work. So your hands are actually objectively superior <laughs> yeah because uh because of course you could only put juicero brand juice packets in it and it had a qr code and the machine was reading it and it, then it checked in on the internet if it was genuine and then it allowed the packet to be pressed ah oh, that is so bad yeah yeah and the indiv individual packets were like one glass of juice were about five to seven us dollars it was insane and of course the thing crashed and uh, it was uh the price was slashed down from 700 to 400 to 200 and i, I think they they're doing refunds now but the the creator wow. and, and owner of juicero is going something totally different now he's selling raw water what's that i don't know but apparently hollywood celebrities love it Oh, yeah, of course they do. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they think it's <laughs> phenomenal. It's raw water. Raw water, okay. Yeah, I, th I think it's like water, but, but that has not been filtered. Like, it's straight from the a river or something like that. But I, I, I'm not sure. It's weird. Just leave a glass of, like, leave an empty glass out in the rain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. God. Apparently it's that. But, of course, the bottles are really expensive, but it's raw water if you're doing a raw diet you should drink raw water not that filthy of crap that they sell in stores yeah dude just yeah not that crap h2o that they sell in the stores get get uh h2o from a different place <laughs> that's so weird god forbid that you drink tap water like a normal fucking person no 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 now you gotta drink raw water yeah that's, that's dumb <laughs> Yeah, and apparently uh, he's making uh, a lot of money with this raw water. That's sad, honestly. Yeah. The snake oil merchants will always be a thing, I guess. A lot of people just like to believe this kind of bullshit. Not sure why. It's like, I don't know, homeopathy. It works so well financially, despite the fact that it's just fucking sugar pills. But people like it. I don't know why. It's a crazy thing. It's uh, what is it called again? Uh, placebos. They're a crazy thing. They can they can work wonders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The placebo the placebo effect is definitely a thing. But 
What you know what's most crazy about the the placebo effect? What? Is that most of the time, even if you tell people that they are taking placebos, it continues to work, yeah. Yep. That is insane. It's wild. When I read that, it blew my mind. It... Yeah, how do they continue working even though people know it's fake? No, what they did was just sugar. Uh, there's a guy named uh, James Randi, and he, uh, he at the start of a show, was he took a uh, big jar of pills, and he said, oh, these are headache pills. And then he went ahead and chugged the entire jar of, of pills. And he said, uh, oh, we'll see how I feel in, like, 20 minutes. So I just took, like, 20 times the recommended dosage in a single day uh, in one go. And then later on in the show, he said, uh, don't worry, I'll be fine. You won't need to call the poly- call the hospital or anything because what I took was home- homeopathy. I'm fine. <laughs> it was all just sugar pills. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, it just doesn't work. Because if it worked, then uh, he'd be negatively inf- uh, impacted by now. You'd be dead. Yeah. But now it's just sugar pills. People still believe it and people still make money off it. It's sad. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah, it's, I, uh, it's... I had a cold once and I went over to the cupboard and grabbed something and uh, I had the I had the pill thinking, oh, yeah, this is cold pill. It should work. No, yeah. I had it. And then later on, I was just like, OK, why do I still feel like crap? Why do I still feel like I'm dying? And I went and checked the packet and it was made from like flowers. Uh, the active ingredient was for like flowers. And I couldn't find mm-hmm. anything on the back that said anything about a recommended dosage. And I was like, oh, no, this is a. Uh, this is fake. This is not real drug. This is why I do not feel any better. So I guess I'm not. Yeah. I'm not prone to. I'm not prone to placebos. Yeah, I mean aspirin is made from plants, but um, yeah. Yeah, but this was like I, I. I can't. I don't have the packet anymore. I threw it out. But yeah, it was like. Yeah. It was stuff you could buy over the counter, and you could eat the. You could eat everything in the packet without feeling any effects because it didn't do anything. Yeah, it wasn't a drug. When I try to take this kind of pills, I, it actually makes my condition worse because I'm expecting to get better. And uh, the fact that I'm not getting better, it, it's somehow making it worse because, uh, you know, the expectation being disappointed yeah. makes me feel worse. And um, I hate that. Thank God we have good old ibuprofen. Yeah, actual drugs that actually work. I don't know how I would live. 100 years ago if i had been born 100 years ago you know sometimes people talk about like oh i would miss the internet or oh, i would miss my car or how but what i would miss the most is fucking pills medicine because i have i have so many medical conditions i would probably i don't know i would probably be be, be dead or uh or either by myself or by the the illness because medicine is we take it so much for granted. We really do. Stuff that c- should kill us uh, can now just we we go to the uh, we go to the doctor. We get some uh, some pills and we're fine. Oh yeah, yeah, the flu the flu used to be a death sentence only a hundred years ago, mm-hmm. and now it's just you're gonna feel bad for a week and then it's gonna be fine. I think it's probably the thing that makes most of a difference in every day's life and the thing that we take most for granted like yeah we could do without tv or without cars but without medicine the life would really be shittier without hygiene and all that we know about modern medicine and everything like that yeah i saw a picture uh on facebook of a guy that had like a cut on his finger and then uh he he just wrapped it up and then unwrapped it later and uh found that it got very infected. His entire finger was black. He killed his finger. Uh, so then they had, he had to get it amputated. Yeah. Uh, if that happened a few hundred years ago, that would have just spread to the rest of his body and he would have died. Like, yeah. something like that would have been an absolute death sentence. You would have died. Just that you would have died. Something simple like that, you would have died. You know, some people yeah, look, yeah. Back, uh, look back at how things were before. And yeah, some things were better, but not everything. There are a lot of things which I, I love about living in this generation mm. like uh like being able to live past age 30 <laughs> that's actually um uh, I, I i hope i'm not gonna sound pedantic but that's actually uh, that's actually a popular misconception people in the old times didn't die by age 30 it's the average lifespan that was 30 because so many babies died at one or two years old 
Oh, interesting. Okay. The the average was really taken down, but actually the life expectancy was around 60 or 70, not really different from now. It's just like so many people died as babies that it it uh, it took the average really a lot of steps down around 30, but it was an average. And, okay. Uh, it's not uh well, it's still a benefit of uh, living nowadays. Is that more uh, like be more people can have successful births, not losing their children? But basically, in in the old times, um, if you could make it to adulthood, you could probably make it to being old. Okay. Of course, except if you were um, if if there was a war or an epidemic or something like that. Of course, people died a lot of those causes. But I mean, people still die from that. Still a lot of deaths from AIDS, from war. Can- yeah. cancer, war. I mean, more, of course, because there are more people. But Yeah, of course. Of course, there are more deaths nowadays because there's more, more life. So, um, yeah, what, what you said about the, the, the guy losing his finger made me think about um, an amusing anecdote. I don't know if you know about uh, a guy that was called uh, Lully. He was a very famous French... Um, half French, half Italian musician from the 17th century, and he was um, he did a lot of things. Like he played instruments, he was a composer, but he was ex- especially known as a um, director. You know? Yeah, I've never heard of him. At the time, uh, directors didn't use uh, that little wand thing, the little chopstick. They used um, a full cane to uh, direct the orchestra, and. Um, one day he was directing um, some symphony or whatever, and uh, he uh, the the musicians were were not uh, playing loud enough, I think, and uh, he he slammed his uh, cane, his di- directing cane, on the floor. He hit one of his toes. The toe got uh, infected, and in a few days he died. Wow, from something that's that small. And that is since then that uh, directors use these little stick things instead of large canes. So ever since then, they, wow, okay, that's interesting, wow. I like this anecdote, because sometimes the origin of things is uh, surprising. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that's why they uh, use small, small sticks for that. That's crazy that that happened. Uh, like uh, that reminds me of how how Houdini died. I think it was Houdini. They were just mucking around before uh, before a show, and mm-hmm. uh, a guy punched him in the stomach because Houdini had this thing where he could always uh, handle getting punched in the stomach, but he wasn't ready for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got punched, and uh, a health complication happened, and he died. Oh, that's how he died. He got punched wow. in the stomach. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. He said he didn't feel well, but he had to go on stage anyway. He went on stage and he died. Uh, he collapsed on stage and died in hospital. Oh, man. Workaholics. <laughs> Couldn't Obsessed. do that. Sometimes I have skipped work because I had diarrhea or a cold. or Man, some people are, like, committed. That's highly committed, though. I could, I could, not, I could never be like that. I, I never know where I hear about these kind of stories of people being really committed and doing hard work, I never know if I if I got to admire them or, you know, find them pathetic. Because it's, it's always been a dilemma to me. Are, are they heroes or are they just dumbasses? It's, well, uh, in Houdini's case, I'd say he uh, it was dumb for him not to get that sort of stuff checked out. Yeah. Because he knew something was wrong. Yeah. Obviously, everyone knew that was something was wrong. I, 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 in fact, so from what I recall from the story, his speech was being slurred. Like that's something oh. you go to the hospital for. Once yeah. your speech is being slurred after something like that, you start going. Maybe we should get that checked out. Maybe there's something very seriously wrong here. Yeah. So I would say it's mostly his. Yeah, I would say it's mostly his fault. But mm-hmm. still, it's yeah. It, it, maybe he just didn't think about it at the time. Like a story about, uh, there's a YouTube channel called Chubby Emu that's really good. And there was a story about a grandmother who uh, ate like one pound of chocolate. And then she uh, said that she felt ill and kind of just, she didn't feel right. And they were just like, oh, well, just go hop in bed. I'm sure you'll feel better soon. Everyone would think that. 
Uh, turns out she went up to her room and then had several seizures. Oh. Yeah, she was really not well. <laughs> she was very not well. Mm. Uh, she lived, but still, yeah. I don't know if people should listen to themselves more, or, uh, but it reminds me of that story of... Um, I think it was um, a chemist, a great, a great scientist from a few centuries ago who was uh, invited to have dinner at the king's table. I don't remember exactly the country, it was in Europe, but um, a gr great scientist was invited to have dinner at the king's table. It, it was not, you know, it was a scientist, man of science, and uh, he had dinner with the king, and um, he, he really had to piss, but he didn't want to upset the king or appear uncouth, so he... He, he tried to stay at the table for the longest time possible before leaving to go to the toilet. And of course, it was a long dinner, and his bladder exploded, and he died. Oh, no way! Yeah. Wow. That's... that happens. Man, politeness is weird. Yeah, it's it really is. People put themselves into discomfort for a... Uh... Social constructs, really. Yeah. I was thinking about that lately, and uh, you know what's a thing that is considered kind of disgusting and really impolite to do in public is uh, picking your nose. But when you think about it, it's not... It's It makes you breathe better. It's uh, It can be really distracting to have your nose full. And uh, what's wrong about it? Like... I can understand why farting upsets people because it stinks and the smell can make people uncomfortable. But if you mind someone picking their nose, you can just look away. I mean, I don't, I don't get why it's socially unacceptable to pick your nose in public. I really don't get it. Yeah, I can't, kind of like that. But there is stuff that's even weirder than that, like uh, putting your uh, putting your elbows on the table, like when you have oh, dinner. Yeah, that's weird. Why, why, do, why do people find that weird? What if I've got people find that impolite? There's probably a story behind this. I mean, not a story like an, an event, but uh, like, uh, you know, like when you shake people's hands. Uh, originally, you shake people's hands to, to prove that you didn't have a, a weapon hidden in your sleeve. That's how it started. Oh, wow. Okay. And, uh, and, and then it became like, you know... Social norm. Yeah. And probably the elbows on the table is the same kind of story. Yeah, it probably is. But just it's aged like that now. Oh, another one is uh, I find a lot of the weird ones are to do with table manners. Having different size like knives and forks for different meals. I mean, that's clearly just a way to see you that you can move to a clean knife and fork from going from entree to main. But yeah, that's that's quite strange. Yeah, that, that's kind of different though because that's... Um... It's special. Not a lot of people observe that. It's kind of like in a really posh dinners. Oh yeah, yeah, when you when you're at a restaurant, like it's always like that at restaurants. But at home, no, I'm just knife and fork, same plate, sort of uh, sort of thing. Even really special restaurants, like really expensive ones, with a, I don't know. I think it came from Russia. I think it's a Russian thing originally. Yeah. M maybe maybe uh, the the elbows on the table thing is like some kind of superstition, because there's a lot of, like, manners thing that are related to superstition, like how you're not supposed to open an umbrella inside, because um, it's uh, bad luck. But people forgot that it's a superstition and it is bad luck, and, and then just say it's, like, bad manners. It, it is a strange thing. I, just, I sometimes I do think about so weird social, social constructs or social quirks that we have that exist... For seemingly very like simple reasons of why we do those things, but it's just yeah. it's it's expected that everyone follows that. Everyone mm. everyone does that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um a bunch of these superstitions have actually well known origins. Like for example, um you know how it's often said that breaking a mirror is uh, seven years of uh, of of bad luck. Yeah, and walking underneath ladders is uh like nine or something. So uh, I don't know about the ladders, but uh, the reason is that 
Um, it was something that was said uh, amongst maids because at the time it uh, it started, mirrors were so expensive that it took uh, seven years of salary of a maid to buy one. So if they broke one, they they had to um, to put money uh, on the side for seven years to be able to pay it back. Oh, okay. So that's the seven years of bad luck. That's interesting. There's a bunch of stuff with the salt too, because salt used to be really expensive. Really? I figured that wouldn't be something else expensive. I figured that'd be something that's everywhere, just because you can uh, get it from water. It used to be really hard to extract. So, um, so yeah, it it was used to, um, at some point, it was used to pay workers. Oh, wow. During the Roman Empire. That's where the word salary comes from, from salt. No, uh, right, like yep. saline sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, yeah, it was so precious that they used to pay workers with salt. Because it was like the most expensive thing that they could find. Apart from, like, diamonds and shit. And yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of things that... That's another thing that we take for granted today. That was crazy. A hundred or a hundreds or thousand years ago. Salt. Salt used to be one of the most expensive things you could, you could find. And, uh, and then it was spices. You know? A, l- a lot of things that... Uh, the whole slave trade... Uh, a lot of a lot of that was around just spices and uh, a lot of people who were. I remember uh, at first uh, people didn't even eat the pineapples. That just there was like this crazy novelty fruit that was weird looking. So they bought pineapples and they put it on their tables just for display, you know, just as a status symbol. And those things were inedible. Anyway, because it was before they got den- genetically modified to be sweet and juicy like we have today. And uh, and I, we kind of bounce back on the snake oil bullshit because there's so many people right now who are afraid of GMOs. That's another thing I don't understand. Yeah, y'all don't get the uh, fear of GMOs. I mean, these things are so fucking harmless and they've been we've been using GMOs for thousands of years that's how humanity started because yeah that's true because i mean it's a different it's a different definition now what gmo is but i mean you can even consider like a selective uh what is it called selective cultivation as genetic uh, mutation it is it it flat out is it's not even that you could consider it 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 is genetically modified so you don't you didn't put a a very small syringe right in the DNA of the plant, but it counts. I mean, that's, we domesticated wolves. Yeah, we're still, we still are modifying the DNA, yeah. We domesticated wolves and turned them into another different animal called the dog. We we made that, uh, and it it is flat out genetical, genetic modification, just like we turned, um, whatever it was called before into wheat and and same as for corn and uh all that was like some kind of inedible weed originally and we we took the best ones and uh we we, we modified the, the conditions and uh yeah a, a lot of a lot of fruits and vegetables and even animals uh there's a reason why you don't see cows in the nature because, and pigs, and chickens, because those are not natural animals, those are man-made, and a lot of people f- don't realize that, but we are still part of n- parts of nature. I mean, we we are still creatures made by chance and evolution and nature. So if it's man-made, it's still made from nature, because technically yeah, we are I, part I, I, of nature. <laughs> Yeah, I find that really strange too, the dif- difference between man-made and natural. Like, what do people consider natural and what do people consider man-made? Like, where is the uh, line drawn? I mean, if you have a building made of concrete, yeah, that's... I mean, it exists in nature, but you can call that man-made. Most people would agree with you. But yeah, then 
do we consider selective breeding and selective cultivation? Is that man-made or nature? I mean, we're kind of manipulating nature a little bit, but it's still nature. Well, I mean, these people wear clothes, don't they? And most of them are vaccinated. And it's, I mean, and they drink Coca-Cola and they don't see anything wrong with it. They use the iPhones and shit. It's so weird that you they draw an arbitrary line and at some arbitrary point for a reason yeah, different that I'm not what, sure of. People have different ideas of what they consider not natural. Like, is, I mean, exactly. is homosexuality natural? It depends on the person that you're asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is, that is also a vast debate. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, it, it yeah, exists in nature, so. so is it natural? Yep. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, cu curing our illnesses, that's something that no animal does. Yeah, no animal because cures their own illnesses. No, putting clothes on. I mean, if, if an animal uh, gets a massive cut, like a massive gash on their body, they keep on running. Whereas uh, we will try and get to safety and then put a pressure onto the wound to keep our blood from leaving our body. Because we understand that without blood, we will die. Animals don't understand that. They just understand pain and having to get away from it. They're such a they're so simple compared to us. So is us applying pressure to the wound and keeping blood inside our body, is that unnatural? I don't know. It's not, it's not something that animals do. It's us. We're smart. Yeah, yeah. The the appeal to nature is becoming such a big thing recently. I don't know if it's because people are afraid of technology or because it makes them feel smarter than the sheeple who embrace our robot overlords without thinking about it. Hashtag that fluid stare. Ted Cruz did 911. <laughs> shit. They're turning the frogs gay! The fl that and, fluoride stare. That, that still yeah. fucking makes me laugh. Oh, yeah, me too. But getting, getting annoyed that the government's putting fluoride in our water for our own personal health. The hell. I mean... Ours don't. I think it's only in the US. They do it. They so do it in Australia. Okay, they don't. They don't do it in Europe. I think. Anyway. Well, then you're it's... free from that fluoride stare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the Australians and the Americans. Yeah, and I still um doesn't work because I still love robots and GMOs and all that shit. I'm not afraid <laughs> of it. I don't know. It's it's weirdly selective. It's because, yeah, those people don't reject technology as a whole. It's just most of them, like, use iPhones and computers and modern medicine. It's just, it remembers, it, it uh, reminds me of something crazy. Um, some some dude was, like, at um, some shop. It's, I think it's called Whole Foods. I think it's an organic shop in the U.S. And um, it was, like shopping for vegetables and shit and um when he arrived at the cashier uh there was a lady in front of him and the cashier was you know preparing to sc scanning the items as a cashier does and the lady like went wild like suddenly so like, no don't just just put the numbers in i know you can do it don't scan it I don't want any lasers touching my food. What? So you got a problem with the light now? <laughs> lasers. The light, the very, like, the same kind of light <laughs> that grew the plant? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, terrifying. Yeah. Don't keep the light away. Ew. I think maybe it's an education problem. Because a lot of people are, are, I don't know, it's like the radiation from the Wi-Fi and and the screens and the, the microwave ovens people are afraid of that a lot of people are like yeah wi-fi it's 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 going through us all the time maybe it's doing shit maybe it's the reason why we have so many so much depression nowadays or cancers or that it cannot all these people who think that cell phones will cause you cancer i mean okay these things all emit radiation, but if you go five minutes outside and there is like this big ball of nuclear explosion in the sky called the sun, you, it emits 
a thousand more times radiation than any Wi-Fi network. The human, the human body gives off radiation. Yeah, fucking bananas do it a lot. Yeah, yeah, the um, the bana- bananas do a fair bit. It's potassium, isn't it? Yeah, it's super radioactive. Yeah. Uh, and our body, our bodies are. Uh, uh, people seem to forget that uh, the human body has an immune system. Like, you don't have to be that scared of germs and radiation and stuff. Our body can fight pretty well against stuff. Yeah, it's the people who believe in detox. That worries me. You, you got, you gotta, you gotta let your body. You've got to put your body through stuff in order for it to to make it strong enough to fight against it later. I mean, detox is a thing. But your liver does it on its own every day. You don't need to do anything special. Yeah. I mean, maybe start to try absorbing less toxins, but it's your choice. Yeah, that, that's that's just general health advice, though. Try to yeah. not drink as much alcohol and stuff. I used to drink a lot when I was when I was young, and when I was like twenty or twenty one, I I quit drinking and I I haven't got drunk in more than 10 years. Oh wow. I don't I don't think it has made me healthier. I think I'm going to start again. Cuz when I see all this bullshit, it makes me it makes me crave a, a nice glass of whiskey. <laughs> it's it's a personal choice really. Um and and people need to just let people have their own personal choices on drinking or not drinking or what they choose to do with themselves. Oh my god, that's that's really that's the thing now. Everyone wants to be safe. That has become an ominous word for 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 me now. People that oh we have what 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 did I see recently? We have made um I, I think it was Facebook. Like of course Facebook is one of the most ominous things in our daily lives. But uh yeah, like we we have um we have heard you. Uh, we have made Facebook more safe. Uh, we have made uh, Twitter more safe. We have, and we don't want more safety. We want more freedom. We have too much safety. Not not enough freedom. Uh, I'm fine with safety being put into cars and heavy machinery and you know stuff like that. Where uh, if it's not safe, I could die instantly. But uh, safety from opinions? I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I think I think I'm fine with uh, a few opposing opinions. Yeah, because cars that, that that is real safety. Uh, yeah, that's actually real. Say. We're talking about um, real stuff here. With stuff where uh, if it goes wrong, I could die. Safer roads, but, safer transport. Every time something goes down on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, people, uh, the the executives, the 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 the, the big hats are like. Oh, don't worry. We're gonna make the platform more safe, and I'm like it's already too safe. Maybe turn it down on the safety and and let us have more freedom instead. Uh, it's 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 crazy, but all the the tech the tech world, it's probably one of its biggest shortcomings and one of the most worrying things about big tech. It's their obsession with safety, like. Like on Android, for example, I don't know if you use iOS or Android. Yeah, I use Android. There was not really any warning or anything, and then it started have the the audio warning when you have your volume at full at full volume for a, for a long time. They say, "Oh, uh, you should probably put your volume down because it can damage your hearing and everything." And uh, it's so annoying because they tell you that not once, but like every couple of days. It doesn't shut up. Yeah, it's 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 insufferable. It's uh, it's like parental mode. You know, it's like uh, kid mode, Ch- child safety. Like, if you're an adult, it should be automatically automatically deactivated and only activated for people who are under eighteen years old or under thirteen. That's the thing for kids. Adults shouldn't have to to uh, to have this kind of um, annoyances. It's it's crazy, and now it's for a uh, light too. When you have your screen at full brightness, they they give they say, oh maybe it can hurt your eyes, and it's, it's the same. It's every couple of days your phone is like uh, this fucking nanny, who is annoying. This fucking you know, it feels like you're at fucking school again. I hated school and I hate this shit. 
It's so annoying. Like, I mean, if I'm going to be going to uh, concerts where I walk out afterwards and my ears are ringing because it was so loud, then do you think I'm actually going to care about whether or not my headphones are too loud? Not really. Yeah. I'll I'll it's... play it as loud as I feel comfortable playing it as. Uh, like, I'll play it at whatever comfortable level I, I play it at. And I don't blast my music. I listen to it at a comfortable volume. Yeah, yeah. Um, but my phone still yells at me. <laughs> Yeah, and the, the fact that it's like an active thing, it's 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 what is most infuriating because you're trying to put your volume at full and the thing stops you and I, like, are you sure? Are you sure you want to listen to music like uh, 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 at a uh, satisfying level? Don't, don't you want to just have it like down low and uh, and the, the, bright, the brightness of the screen? Can it really damage the eyes? I doubt that. I think it's... Uh, for pleasing people who are like paranoid or hypochondriac. Well, if that if that if those people exist, then uh, make it so they can keep on seeing the warning. But I want to be able to see a "Don't show me this warning again" button. I want that on everything like that. I, I don't care being told it once. Just don't keep on telling it to me every single time I do it. If the, if these people actually exist, they probably don't buy phones because they are afraid of getting cancer from that's the true. That's ra- true. Radiations and shit. They probably don't even leave their fucking houses because they're afraid of being hit by a car or something or a meteorite or I don't know, abducted by fucking aliens. What really pisses me off lately is the people who are against nuclear energy. Oh yeah, I I love nuclear energy. I think it's like it's the it's the safest, it's, it's cleanest thing we found. Such a good way to generate energy. Much better than everything. Else. Yeah. And um and people are like, "No, no, uh it's dangerous." Uh It's cuz they hear the word nuclear and they freak out. Because of uh, and the situation in Germany is crazy. What's happening in Germany? Well, in Germany, there was so strong the the anti-nuclear people like i think they had a green party in the in the government and and all that that they shut down all the nuclear power plants well that's against the oh that's irritating that's against nature what are they going to use instead coal okay exactly that's the that exactly what has happened because at oh, first man. they had the the hydroelectric and the um the wind turbines and all that shit, you know, all the renewable thing, sun and all that. And that worked at, to an extent, but it was not enough. So they had to reopen the coal plants. And there's been a lot, lots of deaths in the past few years because of that, because the coal plants are literally killing people because the, the coal fumes are so toxic. Uh, and, and now they have a, a hole in their budget there, there, they have been mixed reactions from France because on one hand, they're buying a lot of our nuclear energy because we are making a shitload of nuclear energy, at least here. And uh, Germany is buying a lot of it. Uh, but also, uh, th- I mean, the fumes are in the air. So, of course, they, they, they pass the front here. And there, there have been people in France who have died because of the German cold in the, in the past few years. Oh, my God. That this is become it's becoming a huge problem. People don't talk about that. I don't get why. I mean, I've seen a a couple cons on Reddit mention it like once, but um, yeah, that's I. It's it's weird. It's just weird. I don't. I don't even want to. I don't even want to judge, because it makes me sound like an asshole. But it's weird. Like why. It's just that they're not educated enough in knowing what nuclear energy is and how it works and the byproducts compared to coal. Like, if you were to weigh up pros and cons of coal versus nuclear energy, nuclear energy is, like, far superior. Yeah. Like, it generates way more energy with way less negative output. Yeah. The main thing that the main thing that's produced from nuclear energy is steam. I mean, there's other byproducts, but the main one's steam. Yep. <laughs> I mean, steam with all the summer sales makes people poor, but apart from that... <sighs> <laughs> Damn you, Gabe Newell. Damn you, nuclear energy that I don't quite fully understand. I'm just going to get angry at it anyway because I heard it was bad. Oh, the, the nuclear nuclear bombs exist. So... Yeah. <laughs> now I'm scared of nuclear. I don't, I'm not even sure it's a matter of education because... It's so easy to educate yourself now with Wikipedia and, and all the resources that we have online and uh, 
it's easier to find the relevant information, but these people will just not trust it because it sounds fake to them. I mean, I, I've heard the evidence is overwhelming, but it's 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 exactly like people who don't believe in evolution because uh, it doesn't sound right to them. And even if there is overwhelming evidence to support the theory, it's just like, nope doesn't doesn't sound true to me so it doesn't sound true to me you can't explain it to me in one sentence therefore and i don't, I don't believe it yeah the only issue i have i believe in evolution but uh the only issue i have with it is we still don't know how we got from single cell organisms to multicellular like that that bits in between the cambryonic explosion i think that's what it's mm. called uh we don't we still don't quite understand that but not understanding it doesn't mean i'm not going to believe in it um because that's just one missing piece of the puzzle. We'll understand it eventually. Like that, that puzzle piece will be filled. Not understanding makes it more uh, believable. Because if a person comes and say, "Oh yeah, I understand everything about this thing," it it sounds kind of kind of I don't know. It sounds kind of pretentious and cocky, and uh, I'm more uh, I, I, I'm more susceptible to be wary of someone who says, "Oh yeah." I got it all figured out. Then someone will say, "Oh yeah, I got it ninety percent figured out." Still a bit of shadowy areas where we're not sure. It sounds more believable. I don't know. I'll uh, I'll believe whichever one can make predictions. If you can make predictions from your theory yeah. and they turn out true, then I'm going to believe you. Like the guy Definitely. that put together the first uh, the first periodic table of evidence of elements. There were missing. There were spaces missing. He said, "Oh, there should be an element here, but we haven't found it yet." And then what happened? We found them. That's a great point. You make a great point. Yeah. Like we, we can make predictions and we can say, okay, so if we have if we have animals here, then if we dig down under the ground, we should find this animal and this animal. Oh, what's that? We found them. <laughs> you know, it mm. can make predictions. Yeah. Evolution can make predictions. And because of that, yeah, I, I believe in it more than any others. Uh, it reminds me of that skit from Futurama where uh, where he was like, aha, but what became, came before this ape creature? Oh, it was this ape creature. And they kept on going back and back and back and back. And he said, oh, admittedly, we don't have this far back. Ha ha, <laughs> I have foiled you. <laughs> Before that was God. <laughs> of course. When I, um, when I first heard of nuclear energy, when I was really young, uh, yeah. of course, when I was super young, I was just like, oh, nuclear energy, that's bad. It gives out fallout radiation. And then uh, when I was older, I was like, oh, I wonder how this works. And then I, I learned about it at school. I was like, oh, this is actually, this is actually really clean. What? It just creates heat and then boils water. Oh, okay. <laughs> then mine is not crazy hocus pocus after all. This is probably the common trait to all the people who believe in bullshit things. A lack of curiosity. Yeah, absolutely. Curiosity, they could look it up uh, on their own, subjectively. Yeah. Understand pros and cons. The cancer of the mind, lack of curiosity. Believing, believing what they first come across without opening up their mind to other potential ideas. Oh man, that used to be such a problem. And I see, I see so many people on, on Tumblr like that. Tumblr is really a great place for memes and for porn and for a lot of things. P pictures of cu cute puppies and shit. But for spreading <laughs> false ideas... It's such a problem because a lot of sometimes I see claims put put on there like uh, I don't know uh, having a high protein diet is bad for your health and there's no source there's no nothing and there's a lot of people who are like oh you gotta spread this people gotta know about this uh, I know someone who is eating meat all the time he must be killing himself uh, with all this protein and it's it's just they see a thing that is typed out. And that looks kind of official and shit. And, and it lines up with their beliefs. Especially that's important. It has, to, it has to agree with them. People love themselves an echo chamber. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's, it's probably a, a bit of, of the, um, the lab coat bias too. People will do a lot of things that, that people just... You dress some actor in a lab coat. You make him sound official. And then in experiments, people listen to these people much more. Even if they just say random bullshit, people will say, oh, this guy has a lab coat on. He must 
He must be an expert. He must. Yeah, is there a study on that? Well, uh, people finding people trustworthy just because they're wearing a lab coat. Yeah, there is. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. And uh, they will agree to do thing that they don't morally agree on just because the person has a lab coat. Wow. Like there, there, there's um, there's a famous experiment. You know, with the um, a guy has to remember uh, pictures or numbers or something, you know, and another guy must be press a button that will send the guy uh, an electric shock. Yeah, what is that experiment called? It has a name. Uh, I don't remember the name, but uh, <laughs> you know how it goes down. Yeah. Like uh, uh, the, the guy who is remembering the things is actually an actor, and the guy who is experimented on is the guy who pressed the button with the electric shock. And um, yeah, if he's surrounded by, by people uh, with lab coats and, you know, pens in their pockets who look like, with, uh, you know, legal pads and who look like they know what they're doing and who are telling him, yeah, yeah, go on. And on the other, on the other, uh, he doesn't see the actor. It's just audio. And the guy who's like yelling, screaming for his life, like, ah, oh, it's so painful. Please stop. And uh, the, guy, the the fake doctor is like, yeah, you can go on. It's fine. And um, yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, Maybe we'll just do it, just because of the lab coat. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a different experiment to what I was thinking of. I was thinking of the other one. Um, What's the one you're uh, thinking about? I was talking about electric shock and pressing a button, but I don't remember how it goes. It's a really, really, really famous experiment. I swear it has something to do with a, a dog. I don't remember. Oh, like, like with Pavlov? Might be. Hmm. Oh, the conformity experiment's interesting. The one with the lines, so different sizes. I think it's the Milgram experiment that I'm thinking of. Oh, it doesn't matter. A few days ago, I asked a question on my page, like, what is your opinion on shitpost bot 5000? And uh, one of my fans uh, answered, one of the best things to happen to internet culture. Aww. And he got and he got 69 likes. <laughs> so that's, that's awesome. Nice. That makes me happy. I like hearing about that, hearing that people like it. A lot of people are saying, yay. It's better than your page. <laughs> oh, I like your page. Yeah, thanks. I have liked it since uh, um, since before shitpost bot. Oh, I think we created our pages pretty much at the same time. No, it was before that because I remember. Oh, actually, maybe maybe we created them at roughly the same time. I think I was a bit after you, though. I remember distinctly where I created it. it was uh, May the fifth, twenty fifteen. I think mine was. Oh, yeah, mine, I think, might be, like, uh, June or July 2015. Yes, basically the same time. Yeah, pretty much the same time, yeah. That's that's crazy to think about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it oh, wait, feels... did, I, did I miss Shippo's Spot's third birthday? I think I did. Oh, God. Oh. That was, like, two weeks well, ago. <laughs> well, no, if it, was in, if it was in June or July 2015... Then it's no, it might be... have been April. It's either April because at the time I didn't think the ship post bot was going to be that important. I didn't think it would uh, envelop my life as much as it has, so I didn't consider it important. I kind of just threw it up on the internet, just like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll run this for a little bit. And well, yeah, I, I don't know. Just pick a random date and say the birthday is now. People won't won't go check. Yeah, I did. It was April fifteenth that I chose. Oh. But then later on, I found out that was uh, wrong. It was actually created a little bit either earlier or later. And I don't remember wh whether it was earlier or later. But yeah, I think I chose April 15th as the date. But uh, hmm. it's been it's been two weeks since then. So My grandma's birthday is on April 15th. Ah. Jewel birthday. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you could, you could pick um, the 20th of April because it's a uh, wheat day. And, um, ah, that's and, true. Uh, and Hitler's birthday too. See, so, yeah, it's the meme date that one. Yeah, it definitely is. Or also, there's May the fourth. Yeah, I was gonna say that. That's another meme date that's coming up. Uh, I, I always make fun of it because I hate Star Wars. Yeah, I, I make fun of that too. The May the fourth uh, shit where our pseudo geeks come out of the woodworks. Oh yeah, pretty cool. I don't care if it's real geeks or fake geeks. They're equally annoying to me. <laughs> it's just... I don't I don't know Star Wars fans. It's just like Games of Thrones fans. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a fan of uh, much of that sort of stuff. 
Uh, I, I mean, I, I whenever I, I often see the new Star Wars because a lot of my friends are really into Star Wars. If I'm if I if I mention Star Wars offhand in a conversation, the next hour of conversation will be all about Star Wars. They're discussing oh. deep Star Wars lore and who was mm. right and who was wrong and different movies and stuff like that. And I have nothing to say on it because I'm just not into Star Wars. So. I mean, we just discussed more than one hour about robots, so... Um, yeah, fair enough. But robots cool. Is it really better? Yeah, it is. <laughs> robots, robots <laughs> are cool. <laughs> I mean, there there are robots in Star Wars, but yeah, they kind of suck. They don't, they don't like real robots. Real robots are really different. And oh, AI is, uh, to wrap around yet again on two topics that we've talked about, AI, robots, AI is completely misunderstood. People are scared of AI for the wrong reasons. People, people think that AI uh, is going to go out of control and take over the world because AI will get sick of serving humans or something like that. Yeah. Which is insane, dude. That's completely, that's completely different to what, how AI actually works. It's the opposite that will likely happen. It's going to be a HAL 9000 kind of thing with uh, robots serving the humans too well and uh, being overzealous. Uh, uh, and and killing us all. AI can go through some crazy, crazy mental gymnastics. There's a couple of thought experiments about AI which are really fascinating, which get people in the right mindset of thinking about how AI works. Oh, please do, please do tell. The way AI works usually is that it has a scoring system where it'll um, score different actions based on how good it is for the AI. For example, a simple robot that have plays Connect 4 would rank a winning move higher than a move that doesn't win, and it would rank the lowest move possible is where it would end up losing. So losing moves are bad. Winning, uh, Avoiding losing is even better, and the best option is winning. So it'll, it's got to try and uh, get the best possible score out of a series of moves. That particular algorithm is called min-max, but a lot of algorithms work that way. Mm-hmm. It'll take different steps to try and get the highest possible score. And the one thought experiment is if you if you had a robot, right, and you told it, go make me a cup of tea, and it was like this, it was like a humanoid robot and it could control its arms and legs. Then it was like, okay, I'll go walk over and uh, make a cup of tea. So it walks on over to the uh, counter and uh, then a baby appears in the way. You do not tell the robot to make a cup of tea and also don't kill this baby that's in the way. You just told us to make a cup of tea. And it is ranking efficiency on trying to get the cup of tea to you as fast as possible in the best quality condition as possible. And that has nothing to do with whether or not the baby lives. And it doesn't have, it doesn't have morality. So That's why, the, um, that's why the, the, the Asimov rule of robotics were created. Yeah. Um, so the robot walks towards counter and goes to start making a cup of tea. All right, we'll, we'll back it up a little bit. Imagine the robot, all right, so revision, we'll chuck a stop button on the robot, right? Just chuck it on like it's back or something like that. So whenever it, uh, whenever yeah. it's doing something that you don't want it to, you can whack the stop button. Mm-hmm. But the robot is going to rank you pressing the stop button really low because that would stop it from making a cup of tea. That would be a zero ranking. That is really bad. You touching the button, that's going to make it. That's going to make it not want that. So it might um, knock your hand away. It might try and destroy the button, but it does not want you to touch that button because that would rank really, really low. It might even uh, engage in violence or something like that to stop you from yeah. pressing the buttons. So you reprogram it. You tell it, okay, now I want you to. Uh, allow me to press the button. Okay, so let's say that stopping the pressing the stop button is now a valid score, high scoring thing. Now it's just going to press the button and not make you a cup of tea because now you're asking it, can you make me a cup of tea or let me press the stop button? Uh, hmm. It's either going to force you to press the stop button, it might press the stop button itself. That's how AI works. It, it works on an, on an incredibly tech, like, uh, uh, like a, it, it doesn't think creatively like humans it, it it thinks in absolutes it computers deal in absolutes yeah that's what makes ai scary is that we might give it the wrong instructions i mean i i knew a, i knew a girl who was autistic and she was basically like that yeah, yeah if you don't give full instructions then uh, she wasn't really dangerous yeah i don't I, I i'm not sure that makes you dangerous that makes you obnoxious for sure but i don't know i i to my knowledge, 
autistic people are not dangerous, are they? I, I don't think so. It reminds me of that subreddit called Malicious Compliance. You know, if it's like people who are kind of acting like robots. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah, know if yeah. you've seen it. I think I've heard of that, yeah. You know what that reminds really reminds me of? Is that uh, a few months or years ago, scientists taught a, a robot how to play Tetris. So, uh, and they have, they had one in the, amongst in the instruction, the robot, uh, they say, you cannot lose. You got to avoid losing. That's your top priority. You know, yeah. like basic instruction shit. Like they, they taught him how to play and his top priority was not losing the game. And so the robot got really good at Tetris. Uh, but at some point, there was just nothing he could do. The lines were piling up and it was getting really towards the ceiling and it was going to lose the game. So he paused it. Before it... Before it... Uh, that's crazy. And the robot said something like, I, I paused the game and I'm, I'm never going to unpause it. So this way I cannot lose. Mission accomplished. And it's on display now because it has been like that and the game has been paused like that for a really long time now and the robot is still uh has still his, his finger on the on the pause button <laughs> <laughs> that's some crazy shit yeah that is crazy i mean that's, that's the kind of behavior that makes uh, ai scary yeah that's what ai does it it does it does stuff that you wouldn't expect because it is so autistically minded you got to think about uh you got to think about them as autists. that's what they are like uh, yeah. ai they're not um, they're not these crazy dictators. They're not human. They're they just mm. they think in absolutes. They deal in absolutes, and that's how they that's how they go about things. It reminds me of that debate that is raging at the moment about self driving cars. Which oh is yeah, one of the most interesting and and useful types of AI we deal with right now, and uh, especially in kind of a collision. Uh, does the does the AI has to protect the driver? Or uh, like if the car is gonna go into a group of people, does she have uh, does uh, does it have to kill the driver because it will spare more lives like that? Yeah, you, it's essentially the trolley problem in real life. And also, how do you value yep. uh, human life? Do you uh, if you see someone wearing a lab coat, do you uh, do you favor their life more than somebody who's not? Uh, what about age? What if you have a uh, an old lady or or a uh, or a young child? What if you have, yeah. on one side of the road, two men, and on the other side of the road, two women? What does the self exactly. self-driving car run into? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's exactly where I was going to. Um, that's, that's such a... I forget what the website's F- called, but there's a website with it. Um, I think it's called The Morality Machine. Nope, I, I don't know of it. Uh, it essentially is a whole bunch of uh, uh, cases of that. Uh, morality Machine... Moral machine. It's yeah. Essentially, uh, you tell you say to the car, "What should you run into?" Given multiple uh, cases. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you uh, it's like an example like this where uh, do you get the car to kill three people who are crossing the road, or do you get the car to kill the people in, uh, inside the car, which are also three people? Who whose life do you value more? Yep. Yeah. That's. How do you decide this? A human would have a really hard time deciding this. So a robot? Is it is it more difficult for a human or for a robot? What do you think? Yeah, this is taking opinions and turning them into something that we need to deal with in absolutes. Hmm. And I don't know. I, I'm thinking about it, and I really don't know if a human would be better at it than a robot. It wouldn't be. Something my, my dad... Um, Whenever I've had this argument with my dad, because uh, we've always discussed it, and our, each of our opinions are actually different than what you thought. You think that my dad, being older than me, would think, uh, oh, no, self-driving cars, no, we shouldn't do it, uh, fear of technology. And I would be like, yeah, future, let's go technology. No, I'm against self-driving cars, and he's for them. And he uh, raised a good point. Okay, yeah, sure, a self-driving car that m- may have killed someone now. There might be a person dead because of self-driving cars. But how many more people are dead per car Versus a human driver than a, than a self driving car, people people are still going to die from self driving cars. I agree with your dad. That's an argument I've, I've I've often said in the past few weeks when there was all this whole argument because an 
Uber, uh, car, uh, self driving, run over um, the Jewish lady in 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 uh, Seattle, I think. Yeah. And uh, what's your opinion then? Um, I don't think we're quite there yet. Um, I think we should wait a little bit or develop the technology a little further before we deploy it. But I think it'll it will be ready at some point, just not right now. Um, oh, so you're not so you're not against self driving? I'm not cars, against the whole we're... concept. I just don't think we're quite ready yet. I think we just need to wait a little bit longer. It needs to it needs to be oh, okay. a little bit more. Because uh, did you hear about the people who hacked into a self driving car by putting stickers onto a stop sign? What? No, I didn't. Yeah, hear they managed about that. to they managed to make it so because um, you got to in programming you're taught okay always sanitize inputs no matter what they are make sure you never get allow it so people can treat it as instructions otherwise people could type stuff into an input field on a form and make it run console commands and delete data or read out passwords or whatever but they when the people were making self driving cars they never thought to sanitize inputs of a stop sign but they didn't and people managed to uh send car send uh inputs into a self-driving car by simply putting stickers in the right place on a stop sign completely hacked into it and took control over it oh man that's crazy <laughs> but what happened with this is the stop sign the stop sign thing what happened then uh it was just a, it was just a thing that they did um it, no they didn't actually do it in a real life scenario they did it in a uh, test scenario to oh, prove that it could uh, okay. could be done okay which uh it's good that they found that early but then how many other exploits are there that's could be potential there uh will people eventually find a way to control multiple self-driving cars at once and then have them all crash into uh crash into something all, all at once to create chaos i'm sure the army is already looking into that yeah and in case in case of a war if you could like remotely take the, um, the control of any vehicle you could have some kind of tactical advantage i don't know i guess yeah i, I could imagine it being used for like terrorism or something like that But that's why yeah. I think we need to um, slowly deploy self-driving cars, very slowly. Make sure that we find out all the uh, all the kinks first. I mean, it's not it's not really being deployed very fast at the moment. No, it's not. Anyway, so I'm I'm fine with how slow it's being deployed right now. I, I'm okay with it yeah, how it same. is right now. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And uh, it's good that we're having these thought experiments before they get put into place because it's a it's a really good way of uh, of understanding a technology before it's in front of us is having these thought experiments, these morality experiments of what should we do in a given case if we did have the technology, theoretically, if we had the technology to do, to do this, what, what should be done? What should happen? Would you go inside a pilotless, self-driving plane? Yeah, because there's less stuff in the way of planes. I prefer to go on a self-driving plane than a self-driving car. There's way more stuff in yeah. the way in a self-driving car. But in planes, True. there's nothing. Good point. I didn't think about that, but you're right. Planes are actually much safer than cars. Oh, absolutely. Think about it. The the amount of uh, deaths compared to the number of passengers is much higher in cars than in, well, any other vehicle, I think. Yeah, because um, there's just so much more stuff in the way with cars. There's so much they could potentially cause damage yeah. to. Yeah. I mean, cars are always yeah. necessary, but... They're not that safe. I mean, self-driving trains, they're already in many, many countries around the world. And not in Australia, yeah. but in other countries. I'm sure France. We have some self-driving metros here. Not trains, but uh, in the metro, we have uh, a couple of lines that are self-driving, yeah. And it works really well. That's good. To my knowledge, it, there hasn't been a single problem in years. Uh, it's faster than the other lines. Less issues. Yeah, so that's good. Delays. Less uh, less human error. Yeah, I've heard that uh, in Japan, the uh, the train system is so good that uh, their average delay, like late delay, is like fifty seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, if the if the train has five minutes or more of delay, the um, the driver of the train will go inside. The, the wagons inside the train and personally apologize to every single passenger because that's such a shame to have five minutes of lightness for a Japanese train. Wow. It's impressive. It's so different to how it is uh, over here. Trains late by 10 minutes. It's like, oh, yeah, well, that's normal. I mean, you should be used to that. You should be used to the trains being late by 10 minutes. Yeah, here it's more like one hour. Yeah, that happens. That happens all the time. 
Oh, yeah, bus, people are the surprised. buses here are awful. I hate the bus system here. I am. Uh, I'll. I'll just have buses not show up at all with no explanation. Hmm. It's annoying. Buses are pretty good here because they're really cheap. Oh yeah, they're cheap. But, they're uh, cheap here too, but unreliable hmm. as shit. Yeah. <sighs> hate them. Hmm. Well. I don't want to. I love. A, I love this conversation with you, but we're getting close to three hours of talking, and my recording device only goes up to three hours. So, uh, well, we well, uh, usually I'm not very good at holding conversations, so I'm surprised we held a conversation uh, that long without uh, without much pausing. We just had a lot to say, I think. I'm that good at animating. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe we just have, um, you know. We, sh- we should really get married in Stardew Valley. We should. We should get married in Stardew Valley. You are the perfect candidate for me. Hell yeah. I mean, I was married to Abigail for years, but I recently divorced to prepare for the multiplayer beta. Uh, I, I'm still with Penny. Maybe I should leave her. Oh, yeah. That was really... That was a huge dilemma for me uh, when I started um, getting into... M- trying to find a worthy candidate for marriage. I was really hesitating with, with, between Abigail and Penny. Yeah, Abigail and Penny are the best girls. After a while, I realized that part of my attraction for Penny was because I felt sorry for her, and I didn't want to feel like it was like adopting a stray dog or something. Yeah, I guess. Abigail was, Abigail was 100% genuine attraction. And um, after years and years of living in... Uh, Pelican Town. I've been more and more attracted to uh, Leah. Yeah, I've been looking at Leah too. Um, I'm currently doing another playthrough with uh, one of my friends, and uh, yeah, I'm thinking of looking at Leah. At at the beginning, she was annoying me with her um, hipster behavior, and uh, I think she reminded me a lot of one of my ex girlfriends, which I had a um, um, not very pleasant breakup with. But um, yeah, I've gotten used to her and. I like her um, artist, free spirit style. I, I mean, sculptures are cool. If I would, if I, if I, if if I admit someone in real life who actually does sculpting, I would find I would find that really fucking cool. Yeah, I would find that cool. I love uh, seeing uh, different different interests like that. Interests I haven't seen before. That's probably the that's probably the art form that is most impressive to me. Uh, sculpture, like how you can from a piece of rock or wood make this these figures make this. I don't know. It's it's uh it it the vision that you need to have. Like you look at the rock and you already see the thing. I I, I for me my favorite art is the stuff which uh is completely unique. I've never seen anything like it before. Somebody's done something completely different out of the ordinary. I love that. That's cool. Throwing me a curveball. Making art out of something I didn't think you could make art out of. Yeah, I remember uh, a bunch of years ago I discovered this artist. I don't know if you know of him called Andy Goldsworthy. No. Who makes art? Who makes art using nature? Like he goes like in the woods and he just picks up a bunch of leaves and he makes a crazy art with this. By um, he orders them by color and then. Uh, he takes like rocks and he makes a sculpture with the rocks that he found on, on the floor in the forest, and it's it sounds like cheap shit to say it like that, but what he does with 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 leaves and rocks that he found right on on the ground is amazing. It's uh, you should check him out. Uh, I'll I'll give you a I'll give you a link or something. Yeah, if, yeah. If you I'd want. like to see that. And uh, yeah, this uh, it's a kind of. Or um, just like this artist who uh, puts like gunpowder on on some wood, and then he sets the the powder ablaze, and it's uh, it burns a pattern on the wood, and it's really beautiful. That's cool. Yeah, I love stuff like that. Which I, I yeah, it's stuff I didn't think of that you could do stuff with, uh, like how um, uh, Godspeed you Black Emperor use. Uh, I don't think they invented it, but uh, when people use screwdrivers and rub it against guitar strings to make a uh, crazy atmospheric sounds, I like that too. Yeah, that's that's pretty old, I think. But uh, yeah, they didn't invent I it, mean, but it's still a really cool idea to do that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. 
or uh, that dude who used um, a violin bow to play guitar. That's cool. Uh, what I don't like is when it's um, the medium for the sake of the medium. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's still got to be aesthetics first. Yeah, of and, course. Because uh, when it's, oh, look at uh, these chalk drawings. Uh, it's so cool. Uh, I, it's a bad example, but, uh, you know, um, when you see the technique Before you see the art, it's failed, in my opinion. I must sound really, I must sound really like a dick, but I, I don't, I don't care. I always sound like a dick anyway. So, um, yeah, and it's really the medium must serve the art. The art must not serve the medium, in my opinion. When you see the technique before you see the result, I, in my opinion, the artist has failed. But when you see the, the, the result and you see it's beautiful and then you look at a technique and you see, holy shit, he made it like that, then that's a success, in my humble, stupid opinion. I think that both are valid, whether it's uh, a unique medium or, uh, or an interesting, like, just the art itself is interesting. I think both can be really, really, really cool because I think they're both just trying to put forward a, an idea. And if he, if the, if the, if a guy had a really crazy idea where he just really needed to make an artwork in this medium that he thought of, it's still art. You know, it's still, it's still fascinating to me. I mean, you don't have to uh, represent a uh, a crazy um, abstract idea with art. You don't have to represent a real world idea with art. You can just make something with a medium that just because you really want to make something with this crazy medium. And that's actually, honestly, that's some of my favorite art, is stuff done with a medium which uh, I never thought of before. Like a guy that I saw that hung a projector from the ceiling and then, like, put smashed CDs in front of it and hung them around the area. I saw this art at uh, the Sydney uh, Museum of Contemporary Art. Mm-hmm. And it just created these beautiful colors on the, on the walls and on the roof and on the floor. That, that, mm. that didn't represent anything. It was purely just yeah. the medium. But God, it looked incredible. I like that. Yeah. I think what is important is to do good art. And then if your technique is original, it's the icing on the cake. It's That's a bonus true. point. Yeah. But you cannot you cannot just be interesting or original and make mediocre shit. Then it's just a gimmick. Yeah. And um uh, I'm thinking about this guy. Uh, I forgot his name. It's from uh, Scandinavia. Uh, he made the this uh, Winter Getan, this the Marvel machine. You've probably seen it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he 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 took like a year to build this machine, and that makes music with marbles. And to me, that's great because you close your eyes, you forget about the machine. And the song is really good. Yeah, it's a really good song. If it was bad music, then I wouldn't pay much attention to it. But exactly, and the f- and that's what makes the Marble Machine great. It's that it's a crazy machine, and it's used to make a great music. Like if you if the music was not that good, I would say, oh, all this for that. That guy is a wanker. But um, yeah, if you can close your eyes, I mean. In the in the case of music, of course, if it's a sculpture, closing your eyes probably not a good idea. <laughs> You're But, not going to um, enjoy it much if you can't see it. I mean, at least you can touch it if it's a sculpture. But if it's a painting, probably don't close your eyes. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you can close your eyes and not know about the song, and it could be some dude playing the melody on a keyboard and it would still be a great song and yeah the fact that it's he built this crazy machine bam bonus points icing on the cake cherry on top and uh but yeah i i think i've made my point pretty clear and i think that we agree anyway so yeah um and to extend on it the uh a combi or uh, i forget what his uh, real name is the guy from brisbane who's working with death groups to uh to make music using glass. That is the craziest thing. And it sounds so wild. I've never heard anything like it before. And I think that's really cool. I mean, if you'll pass the glass and actually listen to the music, it's pretty abrasive and pretty wild. Um, I think it needs, I think it needs something else to be enjoyable. 
Um, but it's a good foundation for something. So that's why I'm looking forward to Death Grips' new album, is just to hear how that crazy sound, the abrasive sound of that glass guy, how well that'll work with Death Grips. Oh, I, I love Death Grips so much. I got to look into that because I didn't hear about that, but it reminds me of... Uh of uh, a, a, doc- a documentary that I saw on the BBC a couple of years ago. And there was this documentary about a, a gal who made music using only glass. And she was just like smashing glass and making music using just that. And it was some old shit. It was in black and white from like the 50s. Wow. And I never... I should have written her name down because I never could find since I've been trying to find for years the name of this woman or or her band or whatever. Cause, uh, and maybe this guy who makes music with glass is inspired by that chick yeah, who he makes might music be. with glass. In the, so uh, maybe I can find her name and, and find that back. Yeah, maybe yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, you, you can make such, such, such good music using... Uh, I remember one of the first uh, videos I saw on the internet was something, for, I think, from Denmark called Music for, for One Apartment and Six Drummers. It was an old video from early internet, you know, from like 20 years ago, maybe. And um, it's, it's basically like that. It's uh, six drummers who go into a house and they start making music with everything they find, you know, pots and pans, this vacuum, hair dryer, the bed. That's cool. It was really, really great. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, you can, you can always make cool shit with new. I like when people are getting like bored with everything. Cause it's, it's, Still, it's kind of crazy to me. There are so many instruments. There are, there are, they are so different from each other. You take, you have dr- a lot of drums, a lot of lots of different percussions. You have the piano. You have keyboards and synthesizers. You have classical guitars, electric guitars. You have all these horns, saxophones, violins. You have so much shit, but you still say no. I don't want any of this. It's been done. I want something new. I'm, I'm bored of that shit. Uh, and they do something I, I, completely I do, different. They, they just use stuff I, that's around in a house. That's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you heard the... Um, oh. It's a Bjork album. Or a Bjork, I should say. Um, uh, let me check on Spotify what's, what it's called. Uh, but she makes all of the music using people's voices. Not just her own, but other, like, orchestras. It's called uh, Med- Medulla. Yep, this is... My favorite Bjork album and one of my favorite albums of all time. I love it so Medulla's much. Medulla's crazy. I like. I love it. I like Homogenic more. That's my favorite Bjork album. But man, Medulla is mm. different. I, I love it for how unique it is. I'm usually not a fan of Bjork. I mean, I like her, but I don't love her. I would say uh, I appreciate her music, but I'm not a fan. But this album, I don't know. It it made a great impression on me. It's uh, it's awesome. It is. It's something else. It's something else. It is fantastic. I, I, I love the, I love it so much for how uh, how different and cool it is. We have been talking for two hours and fifty minutes, so we have about five or ten minutes to wrap it up. Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap we it up then. Rush it. We'll wrap it up before we get cut off in the middle of a sentence. Any? <laughs> no, d- don't worry. Um, anyway, uh, we can always do another one in the near or distant future. Yeah, we can see how successful this one is. See how people are. Uh, see how people enjoy our ramblings. Man, you know, I got 2,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, so it's, if, it, if it has 100 views, it's a good number. Yeah, well, but, um, I'll, I'll be linking it on shitpost, but... That's cool, thanks. We're, we're a similar, uh, similar likes now, so I'm sure people will be interested to, uh, to see the two combining. Yeah, sure. That was really cool, by the way. That, that, I, that was a really great discussion, and uh, it was really fun having you on the podcast. That was, a gr- that was a great episode two, and um, well, I just I just want to thank you for accepting the invitation and for being such a great guest. I want to thank you for being such a good conversationalist. So uh, to make me talk this much is uh, is impressive. Usually I'm uh, usually I don't talk much. Maybe I should make that my new job, conversationalist. <laughs> that would that 
I mean, that's that's great. That would be great on LinkedIn. <laughs> I'm really good at talking to people. <laughs> no, I'm really good at making people talk. Exactly. I could, I could work. I could work for the cops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not physically fit, but I know how to make people talk. I mean, they won't talk about exactly what I want them to talk about, but they'll talk about stuff. We'll talk about robots and the future and transhumanism. <laughs> The human truth serum. <laughs> I mean, my name is Mojito, so it's kind. It's a kind of truth serum. That's true. It is that a form of truth serum. I'm. I. It's a well. It's a well chosen name because I. I remove people's inhibitions. Make them talk. Yep. <laughs> well. Um, well, I think that's it. Uh, thanks again for. Um, for being there and. Uh, no, thank you. I, I legitimately had a good time talking. It was good. I think that's a date then. I think in a, in the future, I will invite you again for another episode. That sounds good. We'll 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 play we'll probably play uh play Stardew Valley anyway. Oh yeah, yeah. And we yeah. can we can talk while playing Stardew. So that that would be awesome. That would be a great uh that would be a great let's play slash uh, this conversation slash marriage. Oh yeah, we'll we'll uh we'll have a nice gay marriage. Gotta do this. Is your is your character male or female? Um, I kind of keep on changing character, but my first character was male, and my current character is also male that I'm playing with my friend. But I'll make another one. If you make, because mine is female, so if you make a female one, we can be double gay. Hell yeah! We're we're two dudes who getting married as two women, so it's double gay. Yeah, I'm down for that. Dub double the memes. <laughs> That's a <laughs> That's a perfect <laughs> that's a perfect ending. Uh thanks for uh listening everyone and uh tune in uh next time. Uh normally my next guest is uh, Heather Boyd, so uh keep um fuck, how do you say? Stay tuned guys and uh, don't forget to stay hydrated cuz water is important.